Welcome, everybody, to episode 12 of the Hot Rod Blues podcast. I am Sean Brereton with Auto Enthusiast Network. I'm Javier Agustin with Bomber Steel Customs. Mike Abbott, Steel Rose Metal Co. Sean Young, Kingfish Metalworks. And we have a very special guest today. Um, <coughs> somebody I'm very proud to say that uh, we've been friends for, for a little while. Uh, Mr. Clay Milliken, who is a six-time IHRA champion, uh, an HRA uh, driver of the Parts Plus. Uh, give me uh, Parts Plus Great Clips, Summit Racing. Uh, top fuel dragster. So let, let me do that for you. Right? Yeah, he did, yeah, he did it all without his let notes. Let me do that. I was for like, you. yeah. All right, let's. Uh, all, all we're, we'll edit this in post. My, Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, all my notes were over there. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm six-time top fuel world <laughs> champion Clay Milliken, driver of the Parts Plus Summit Race in Mainline Top Fuel Dragster. I may have done that more than once. I like, <laughs> yeah, I like, I like, I like his once version twice, better. Right? I know. A lot smoother than mine. You need a better hype man. I'm sorry. We'll bring <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I, know. I thought about it. We should have, we should have had you do the... Uh, I'm not doing a do, vintage voice on that. I, yeah, you could have done your voice. You know, We didn't even know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> but man, uh, thank you so much for coming on to well, the show. I, I appreciate you pestering me long enough to... We finally <laughs> figured out when I was home I know, to do right? this. You yeah. know, that's, that's the thing, you know, that... I love what I do, and I love being at home. And I told you, you know, where do I got to go? How does this work? You know, that sort of thing. And you guys just come here. This is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So that was one of the things why we bought the all the equipment was so that we could go to, uh, you know, we could go to mobile. The people. Yeah, do, mobile. Do remotes. They yeah. Call them remotes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, I mean, I think uh, I think eventually be it'd be great to be able to do car shows and stuff like that. You know? Oh, so hundred yeah. percent. I'm a podcast nut. Uh, over the last few years. I don't know what it is, but man, I love them. It, it makes driving to the races so much faster. Oh yeah, I just totally enjoy them. I'm the same way. I, I've gotten to where I'm just listening to, I'm listening a lot more mm-hmm. to not music, just just people talking. So well, it's that's because to, you're 150 years old. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. How's That'll your hearing? It. How are you still hearing? What? <laughs> well, these yeah, headphones the are really good. Oh, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm driving down the road with these on. Yeah, <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> no. Um, but you know, so uh, so obviously you were born and raised here in Drummonds, Tennessee. Uh, so you are you are a legend in in the Memphis area, of course. Whether you say you are or not, um, you know, there's nobody else who has uh, achieved the level that you have in in, in this uh, in this area, other than Preston Davis, who we had on two uh, two weeks ago, I guess two episodes ago. Yep. And um, of course, he's way before you, but. But you've gone a lot further than, than, than he has. I don't know if it's uh, hard-headedness, persistence, or whatever it is. My mama always had a line, and, you know, people would ask, you know, they ask me all the time, you know, how do you, how do, you do this? How do you get there? And mama always said, it's you got to have the want to. And I've always had the want to. I wanted to do this basically more than anything. I mean, you know, I, I hate to kind of head off down the uh, like the motivational path, but if you want to do something more than almost breathing, yeah. like you'll figure it out somehow, some way you can figure it out. Did it take people? It always does. You know, I mean, for me, you know, I, I was fortunate enough that I met the right people and I was at the right place, all those sort of things, but that was supposed to happen that way. But you got to have the want to. And me and you were talking before we went live. I mean, I was 30-something years old. I worked at the Kroger Food Warehouse down off Airways Boulevard for 11 years. So it ain't like my, you know, mom and daddy paid for me to do it like a lot right. of the kids that are out there these days. And I'm not knocking them either. You know, if yeah. mom and daddy would have had money, they would have paid for me to have a top fuel car. I'd be totally right. fine with it. You know, it, right? I'd yeah. be okay yeah. with it. Yeah. You know, uh, we were talking about podcasts, you know. A lot of people like, oh, you know, Dale Jr. Well, you know, that's senior's kid. He can't help that. Yeah. Right. He can't help that, you know, but you got to have the want to. If you want to do this, you can, you know, whatever it is, doesn't matter what it is, whatever you want to do. If you want to do it, you can figure it out. Yeah. But you got to want to. Yeah. Right. So like, uh, well, let's let's go back to kind of how you started. How? how I mean, yeah. I mean, what, uh, yeah. I, what what was your thing with cars? How did you get involved in cars to begin with? And then and then let's go step through. Yeah. So, you know, daddy drag raced. I do not remember it. But he and he did not work on cars at all. Uh, Right, you know, eighth mile away is a little grocery store that my my grandfather started. And so that's where I grew up. And that's what mom and daddy did. And 
So for me, it was something about hearing the stories about, you know, him being crazy and driving wild. And he actually held drag races. I mean, they would take, you know, Cokes and Pepsis and ham and cheese sandwiches. And mama would sell them out of the back of a pickup truck at a concrete strip on Wilkinsville Road, which is how y'all got here. You come down Wil yeah. Wilkinsville yeah. Road in between here and Millington. Right. Yeah. There was a wagon wheel. You know, the Navy base being right there in Millington. Right. So there was a wagon wheel in this in a field that you drive by on Wilkinsville Road. So Daddy held drag races there. And really? everybody thought he was weird because they were eighth mile. There it wasn't long enough for a quarter mile. But yeah. but anyway, so I've heard, you know, heard all those stories and and he loved racing and I mean my oldest son's named Kale, so that might tell you that I love more than just drag racing. But for me it was always the fastest things on the planet, which was top fuel cars, but I love NASCAR. I love Supercross. I love motorsports in general. There's not much motorsports I don't like. But when I turned 15 years old, uh, there was a 69 Dodge Charger sitting in the parking lot at Mom and Daddy's store with a crash passenger side fender. Daddy had gave me a 63 Dodge truck with the old Poly 318 on the tree nice. that I drove around in the backyard because I was 12. You know, so... <laughs> Uh, I was delivering groceries long before I ever got a driver's license, but we're out in the country, and we were way more out in the country back, back then, then yeah, you know. Right. And so we finally found out there was a drag strip in Jackson, Tennessee. So we've, you know, it was like a family trip to do that. Yeah, you know, that would I mean, be a pretty, yeah, it's a pretty big, good trip from big, here. <clears throat> big trip, you know, it's 80-something miles, you know. Back then, that was a big deal. Two-lane roads. Yeah, and, yeah. you know. <laughs> So we went and I, I, you know, we pull in, we borrowed a trailer and we pull in at Jackson and they're like, what class are you running? Well, what's the fastest class you have? You know, super pro. Well, that's what we're running. You know, our, our car's fast, yeah. you know, <laughs> they, they have a thing at the drag strip called a time slip. <laughs> After I made a run, I, I was going back up there. Can I change what class I'm in? You know, cause that car wasn't nearly as fast as I thought it was. Right. Yeah. So it started from that. We didn't understand bracket racing at all. I grew to love bracket racing. I still go to the Memphis track when I can, I go to other places and watch. And so it just kind of started from there, but I wasn't a very good drag racer because my whole thing was, I want to go fast. Right. I love going fast. And so where, you know, knowing what I know now, I worked on my car too much. And it wasn't to make it more consistent. It was to make it go faster. faster yeah. You know, and so. <laughs> Didn't make it consistent yeah. at all. Yeah. So that 69 Charger turned into a 70 Barracuda that literally come out of a junkyard down Leaf Lake Road over there. Uh, a little lighter than the old big old Charger, you know, yeah. and then. You know, that turned into a duster from another guy that y'all should actually have on here, a guy named Cliff Hubbard, street racing legend from yeah. uh, the Frazier area, yeah. who's now my brother-in-law. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, I bought a duster that he had, had a, you know, basically exhaust pipe for a roll cage, you know, <laughs> and you could see from one end out the other, you know, made it really light for street racing. Uh, then that turned into my first rear engine dragster, which I bought from Bucky Gallimore. Okay. Um, uh, you know, also another Memphis based guy that knows how to go fast. Yeah. We actually know? have Jeffrey Ferguson on yeah. next week. Is, oh, there you go. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. And he's done lots of stuff for Bucky. Yeah. So from, you know, I'm kind of blasting through this, but we're talking about a guy that's been doing this for a long time. Yeah. I'm yeah. 56 years old and I started going to the drag strip when I was 15. Yeah. So, but that first dragster, I was like, man, I'm I'm hooked on dragsters because I'm a Chrysler guy. You know, love me, hate me, whatever. I had a 440, which the heads on 440s are terrible. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> they, they are. And it was all of a sudden super fast. You know, my 440 and a dragster, now this thing runs pretty fast. So it just grew from that. Uh, I don't know how fast you want me to continue down oh, this path. Fine. Yeah, but, no, uh, just Tell the story. It doesn't matter. You know, so obviously, you know, we're, we're racing at, at Jackson. We're going to Bahia, you know, and a big trip, we would go to Sykeston. Sykeston, Missouri, go to the racetrack up there. And that was a family trip. Like, we might sometimes actually spend the night, you know. Right. Now I drive to the race shop, which is 250 miles from here, up there and back in the same day. I do it all the time. Yeah. You know, but uh, 
That's an easy drive. Up yeah, there. it really is. So what you was know? your what was your first biggest win for you? The one you remember? You're like, all right, that's when things changed uh, and you started getting notoriety. Man, that's multiple answers to that. Uh, I mean, my first big bracket racing win was in Bahia. It's funny how people say that. Bahia. Bahia. You know, yeah. you know, <laughs> Try spelling it. Yeah. Yeah. Never said it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You think pronouncing it's weird. Try to spell it. Yeah. I won a, a decent-sized bracket race sponsored by Comp Cams. I'm throwing in the sponsor plugs already. <laughs> but, uh, That's fine. We and you know, what I, you know what I remember about that is I had bought, off the Snap-on truck, a, a, a knife, a really cool knife. I left it on the bumper of the truck, and I lost it that night because my tra- trailer lights wasn't working, and I was Skinning wires. Oh, you know? wow. but that's, that's $200 knife. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't buy Snap the Snap on, you know the deal. You're, you're, still, still, making, you're still making make payments. payments. Yeah. You're still making payments. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you were quick on that, Javier. Oh, good exactly. good one, buddy. Yeah. Me and the Snap on guy know each other. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, that's the never ending. That's like taxes. It's, it's right. Columbia House all over again. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm paying those CDs off still. That's funny. But... That was, you know, pretty cool. My actually, my brother-in-law. Man, I hate to get into the too much of the technical side, but you know, because a lot of the people like Preston Davis, he hates a trans brake button. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. don't want to hear the word delay box. But right, yeah. But what I remember about that win, I raced David Sherloni, another guy that's raced it around the Memphis area for forever. Cliff, my brother, wasn't brother-in-law at that point, but he reaches in and puts five thousandths in my delay box and had he not i would have went one thou red you know wow. and uh, i remember that i remember lose, losing that pocket knife and i remember <laughs> literally we're like in the water box and he opens the door and adds five thousandths to my delay box but you it's know a good crew chief man yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> i'm hearing something hold on my spidey senses too. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. But, I mean, you know, moving forward, you know, big wins, I've had a lot of them. I mean, I've been very, very fortunate, you know, and we'll save my ultimate win for, for when we get there in the story because I know we're going to cover all, a yeah, lot yeah. of stuff. But, yeah. you know, my first Top Fuel win, and we'll go backwards to get to how I got to Top Fuel because I'm sitting here telling you that, you know, Mom and Daddy had this little tiny grocery store right over right. here. But, yeah. you know, I raced in Grand Bend, Ontario, Canada, my first year in Top Fuel, I raced Shirley Muldowney in the final round. Oh, wow. And, uh, wow. and I won. But uh, oh, wow. there's more to the story than that, obviously. There's a lot more. But that particular run against Shirley was pretty cool. I do my burnout. She does her burnout. And when I'm backing up, I notice she's still sitting there. Mm-hmm. Like, she's just sitting there. I'm like, huh, that's weird. Well, I get completely backed up, and like my crew's done started pulling me back forward. So I'm almost getting the the happy feet. Thinking, oh, wow. boy, it's a, it's, a it's, a it's a single. Yeah, yeah it's a single. You know? Well, her crew runs out there and pushes her back. And while this is all going on, I've always, from day one, I wear radios in the top field car. And we can talk, believe it or not. Loud oh, as no. they are, you can actually talk. Wow. I'm asking my crew chief, Mike Clover, what do I do? You know, they're taking so long, I'm thinking – you know, I can just probably go ahead and turn top bulb on and the starter's going to tell me to go. I'm like, what do I do? No answer, no answer, no answer. They push her back. And we have waited a while. Seems like an eternity when you're sitting in one of those yeah, things, you right. know. So finally, she turns the top bulb on. We do our procedure and I stage. Then she holds me up. Like, she waited a little while, you know. I'm like, all right, I done waited on you all this Playing time. Playing mind I, games yeah. with you. <laughs> so I win, and, you know, we celebrate. It was a big deal. A lot of lot of vomiting going on. Not me, because I'm a non-drinker, but right. some of the crew. So I finally think about it, and I ask Mike. I'm like, was the radio not working? And he said, yeah, it was working. I said, well, you didn't answer me. He said, let me just tell you this. I've known Shirley since I was a kid. And if you were going stage and take a single against her, I wanted nothing to do with it wow. <laughs> because you would pay for it. Yeah. yeah. She's a fiery lady. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've been on both sides of it. She's, yeah. she's a very fiery lady. Wow. When she's on your side, she's on your side. When she's not, it is bad. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I Luckily, I'm on her side right now. She's awesome, though. So it's good. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Uh, yeah, I didn't but, know we were going to get a Shirley story. That, I know. That's, yeah. that's pretty great. I yeah. have a few of them, actually. So... Another Shirley story, 
again, this was my first year in top fuel mm -hmm. and you know, and I'm like, holy crap, that's Shirley, you know, and, but she, she would give you little nuggets every now and then. And one of them was, you know, back then everybody had tow vans, you know, and the door, you know, the big Slide sliding door, door yeah. you know, yeah. and she told me, she's like, when you're up here waiting, she's like, leave that door open and let all these efforts mm -hmm. know you're not scared and hiding from them. I thought that's pretty cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Now that we don't run vans anymore, and I do keep the window because if it's hot, got the air conditioning going, you <laughs> yeah. know, because you got a twenty layer fire suit on. But I thought that was pretty pretty cool. It you is. Yeah. Well, you know, you hear in football the the rookies always talk about you know the veterans. They taught me how to be a pro. Yep. And it was probably the same thing. Yeah. It was a little nugget yep. that that she yep. kind of passed along. Oh yeah. Super I mean, cool, man. Cha cha, man. Yep. I uh yeah, big fan as a kid, man. I, oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Who wasn't? If you were, yeah. I mean, I think if you if you were into drag racing at all, well, that, that whole you know, era of drag yeah. racing. You know, I mean, yeah. it it it, uh, it changed fashion. It changed bicycles. You know, kids marketing. Had, yeah, marketing. Yeah, yeah the yeah. the t-shirts that came no, with it. That. Regardless if you followed racing at all, I you mean, know, it, snake it, mongoose. I all mean, you of know, it. All yeah, crazy. Yeah, hot wheels. Sure. Crazy, crazy. I got another little nugget that come from not a legendary racer, but a legendary track owner, a guy named Bill Bader. He owns Norwalk. Uh, Norwalk's legendary racetrack. It was, you know, the biggest IHRA race of the season was there. World Series? Yeah. Uh, no, that that's Cordova. Okay. Cordova. But it, this guy's amazing. Um, mm -hmm. I've got a ton of stories about him. But my first year, again, and I, it was starting to look like I was going to do pretty good. And so he's the president of the racetrack and he later the following year i think but <clears throat> became the president of the ihra but anyway we had just run low et or whatever at his race and i got a pile of people i'm signing autographs you know i'm hollywood you know it's <laughs> right. my first year and i people didn't want my autograph you know before that you know right and i've got on sunglasses and he comes over and, and he's a very touchy huggy kind of guy like he does not see a woman he doesn't kiss not in a bad way it's right. kiss on the cheek kind of guy yeah, yeah. you know right. yeah and so he kind of puts his arm around me and pulls me off to the side because there's a bunch of people back there. And he said, are you getting paid to wear them dang sunglasses? No, sir. I don't ever want to see you wearing them again, ever, except on top of your head when you're signing autographs. Right. He said, these people have paid to come here to, to watch this race and to see what you look like. When you sign an autograph, you look that person in the eye. I don't ever want to see you with those on again. Wow. And then if you see me sign an autograph, I'm a sunglass wearer. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they'll be on top of my head. That's it. Even if I'm squinting. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's yeah. But, yeah, that's but awesome. Th that's one of those things that stuck with me, yeah. you know, from a guy that I looked up to. Yeah. Sure. To this day, he's now turned the racetrack over to his son many, many, many years ago. But to this day, if I get hung up on, like, I'm trying to put some kind of business deal together, sponsorship, you know, uh, it's like, man, how do how do I work this deal? You know, you've always, which is another thing we can get into, but people, you know, they're like, how do you get sponsored? That's a whole other subject. Right. But let's say I'm trying to marry company A to company B because that's really how you get sponsored is you make sure. business for those guys. And I can't figure it out. You know, I've got these connection here and i got a connection here. It's like, how do I marry all this? I'll still call that guy. Wow. He's now, re you know, retired. He lives in Idaho. He's a big gun guy. You know, I think he bought like a thousand acres in Idaho and he can go outside and shoot his guns. And, and you know, he's probably near 80 years old, but he's still wow. one of the smartest guys I've ever met. I got to tell one other story. Yeah. So we had won the race at Norwalk and it's Monday. We, you know, we, we had a big time. And again, I don't drink, but I always stayed and had a big time with the crew guys. So we're a little late getting there, and Bill Bader himself is out picking up trash at the racetrack. You know, he's that kind of guy. He parks cars. His wife parks cars. His kids park cars. I mean, you name it. This is the kind of person, salt-of-the-earth kind of people. Right. And so he comes by, and I'm like, Mr. Bill, how did you know? How did you start this place? How did this get here? You know, it's, it's in Norwalk, Ohio. You know, it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere, you know? And he's like, well, let me just tell you, this is how you got to think about how I've made it work, not how I started it, but how I make it work. He said, I've got to convince people to pay me to watch two cars go down a strip of asphalt. He's like, 
they can watch that right there on 401 for free. Right. It's my job to figure out how to get them to pay me to do it. And he's like, yeah, that's my job, Absolutely. you know, which is not rough. I said that wrong. I said, how do you start it? But, yeah. you know, the yeah. place is just amazingly, they have the largest uh, non-sanctioned event every year. They'll have 45, 50, 60,000 people show up for a match race. Wow. wow. They do that every year. And the kids have continued on that thing. Another cool thing, yeah, I feel like I've went completely down a rabbit hole. <laughs> you go to you go to the bathroom there, there is someone in there wearing a tuxedo that has cleaned it before you went in and they clean it after you come out. Wow. Even if you just go pee. I don't That's know how awesome. I, I don't know how I segue that last bit into this next bit, which is do you know what's going on with Memphis Motorsports? Program? Man, I just did an interview yesterday on Channel Three News. Yeah. Um, I grew, I see. I grew up listening to Top Fuel and, and Test and Tune. I grew up on the Navy base. Oh, so well, Navy you could hear kid. it. Yeah, 100%. I grew up in Millington my Shoot. whole life. Yep. I can I, hear it in Cordova. What are you talking yeah, about? Sure. Well, I mean, that was, you know, how people yeah. get used to trains running by the house. Yeah. That was a normal thing for me. You hear jets back when the base was yep. up, jets going and and Top Fuel and and Test and Tune on Thursday. And I remember when it was the Winston Cup Series, and they it shut down for a little bit in the '90s, and then somebody else bought it, and yep. then Dover took it over. And uh, in my yeah. other professional life, I do fire department. So mm -hmm. we were allowed to, yeah. Dover, Dover would put the class on and we would do extrication and do yep. standby fire watch for that. So it, it's a, it stings a little bit to know what's going on over there. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I, don't, I didn't see the interview. Uh, I didn't either. I mean, I did it. But you I did it, but you don't know what right. you said. I mean, they were, you know, they were doing their job and trying to put me on the spot a little bit. And the truth is what I know is going on is, not fact. I know what's being put on the internet. Right. right. Yeah. You know, and so my interview basically turned into this this place needs to be here, you know. I mean Absolutely. It's uh, it's a gathering spot, you know, and we know street racing is is a thing and yeah. it'll go up and be much worse oh, yeah. if if, no, this, if that place is not there. Up for catastrophe yes. in, in the tri state area. Yeah. And yeah. I, I mean granted I know it takes, you know, tons of tons of money and you know, I wish the local people would support it a little more. You know, right. all I hear, you know, me especially, is when's NHRA coming back? Well, yeah. that's, that's owned by IHRA. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. exactly. It's right. owned by a rival company. Yeah. yeah. Um, do I think it could come back? A hundred percent if somebody else buys it, you know, right. because NHRA's lost a few races in the last couple of years. Yeah. So I think there is a spot available. You know, there are a lot of people like, well, why don't you buy it? Well, I don't have that kind of money. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, well, yeah. it, it takes a lot of money to, I mean, to own a place that big. Right. And, and I think keep other, running it. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, I, there's, it's, it's a shame if it does go away. I mean, I absolutely love it. I was there the day they stuck the gold shovel in the ground to mm. break ground. Ground. Yeah. yeah. I was there. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what's happening. I really don't. I mean, I know what I'm, I'm being told. I have done a little bit of digging, calling some people in, you know, the government positions or whatever right. you know and they don't really know yeah. either it's think, always about I, money i think if way, you, you have you such know. a personal like if you grew up near any one of those tracks anywhere usa um you're connected to it if you've ever wiped the back of your neck after leaving and have that black soot oh, are you yeah. really doing the burnout absolutely we so call you, those good your freckles that's right yeah. <laughs> good year freckles yeah. that's awesome yeah so if you've got those off a of track you're married to that track some kind of way oh 100 you know, so. i mean there's so you know so much history there you know I mean I I wish somehow some way it was listed as a historical place then it wouldn't go away I don't know, you know? if you know this John Ford saw Elvis there yeah so that's a, that's that's that is that's there's a marker right there the third yeah. time we've brought that up in the podcast <laughs> it keep, it, and it keeps being me <laughs> it is it's, it's is always you until we get force on here I'm, I'm <laughs> don't so, waste your time I know. <laughs> so to double back you worked at a grocer. Up until you were how old? Uh, man, somebody's that's better at math than I am. So I quit my real job, which was Kroger, the Kroger Food Warehouse, in '98. I wow. was born in '66. So what's the what is somebody do the math? I don't 32. Do 32. Yeah. Years old. 32. So I was 32 years old when I became a professional driver. <laughs> so you walked away from. Yeah. Your grocer job at 32 yeah. years old. And Threw in the towel. That's, that's yeah. epic, man. And don't think that uh, me and my wife don't cover this a lot. Yeah. By now, I would have had a nice 401k. <laughs> right. I could have been thinking about retiring. Right. Uh, insurance. Insurance. Oh, yeah. You Stability. work for yourself. Yeah, oh, my right. goodness. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah. uh, but 
I also tell her this, that her and I are living our retirement because right. she goes to every race with me. Uh, she quit her real job in 2008. It's a story there. Uh, and we go, you know, exactly. I mean, we, we, we go, we, we grab the dogs and we roll yeah. out, you so know, what was that? What, what did that conversation look like when you came to her and you said, look, uh, I think I'm done with this. <laughs> I'm going to go drag race. For so you know what? It was backwards from that. Really? She yep. told you you were done with it. So <laughs> I can't tell you dates. I can't, right. I can't necessarily tell you oh i won this on such and such a date where like somebody like preston man you know in the right. 62 i you know i was I can, with you I, I don't have that <laughs> i don't have that yeah but I can, i'm glad you don't because i don't either like i, I can't it. remember i i've got buddies like i played soccer my whole life you know yeah. and they'd be like oh yeah i remember that time you scored that gold and that and, da, 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 and we won four to one whatever i'm like no man I, no i i don't yeah. remember the goal and i don't remember yeah. when it, i don't remember any of that i mean it, you know if you go digging a little bit, you know, in your memories and somebody brings it out, yeah. you know, but anyway, I yeah. remember this specifically for two reasons. So I got the opportunity to get my top fuel license. I guess I need to tell that a little bit. So a guy named Raymond King was the vice president of TCI down in Ashland, Mississippi. Right. And one of my first real trips without mom and daddy I drove to Ashland, Mississippi to get a torque converter for my Dodge Charger. <laughs> and I met this guy named Raymond King. He was a Mopar guy himself. And it just so happens, and y'all may not know these names, but they were heroes of mine. A guy named Sheldon Gecker and Joe Covert were in the parking lot with their race cars out. Joe Covert and Sheldon Gecker... Gecker was my guy because he was a Mopar guy. Right. Uh, super gas world champion multiple times. And he had a little Dodge Charger. I'm digressing. How, how about that big word? I just yeah, there I you like go. It. I like it. All those years yeah. of education. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Mumford High School. So I meet this guy named Raymond. And he, he, for whatever reason, Raymond took me under his wing. And, of course, TCI went to all the national events, whether it was IHRE, NHRE. So... I randomly call him because he gave me a card. Like, how do I start going to races out of town? You know, besides Jackson and Bahia, you know, right. whatever. And so he started helping me. And I don't mean giving me money, but like just whether it be this is how you do this. or And then that turned into literally I would go with him to races. And that's how I got to start traveling, doing NHRA, IHRA, that sort of thing. So... TCI was bought by Felpro Gaskets. Oh, I didn't Raymond know. was such a good salesman and, and good at what he did, they fairly quickly moved him from Collierville's, where he lived, from Collierville to Chicago. Actually, Skokie, Illinois is where Felpro right. is. Mm -hmm. And so there's a few years in here that I'm kind of combining, but as time passed, TCI, while I was, you know, racing super comp and super gas or whatever class I could run, they would not sponsor a sportsman racer in, in giving them money or anything like that because they sold to everybody. So why would they, right. you know, that's bad for business. Person, yeah. 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 But what they did do was start paying for my gas to get there. And what I was doing was I would bring broken transmissions home, converters home, I'd bring them back to Drummond's, and then I would take them down to TCI. So that was how they justified paying for my gas. And I hauled their display. So yeah, I'd yeah. roll a display out. It was a symbiotic you know. relationship. Yes. Yeah. So when he moved to Felpro, they continued doing the same thing. But now I'm hauling Felpro gasket displays as well. So this probably was the first or second year he was at Felpro. We were racing, that, going to be racing that weekend in Cordova, Illinois, IHRE race and he said hey the Felpro company picnic is going on Thursday can you leave work and come by the company pic picnic blah 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 blah. so I do that and I meet a ton of people Felpro is a big company yeah and I, I had you know my old Dodge truck and my old little Dodge dragster you know and I revved it up a couple times all that sort of stuff and I meet a lot of people so Fast forward to towards the end of that season, Raymond calls me and says, hey, do you remember this Peter Lehman guy you met at the company picnic? 
maybe really? <laughs> he's like his dad owns the company his family owns the company i should say and his dad's the president i'm like oh i do remember that he was a young guy in college right and he said yep so he's writing a story for a non-fictional writing class he went to northwestern smart guy and he wants to write a story about what you do to go drag racing i'm like okay well what's that mean he said here's his phone number call him and y'all figure it out so i call this guy who i know's dad has you know a lot of money a lot of money a lot of money owns Velpro, the family does and i was like okay my my last race of the year is coming up you know in a couple of weeks we're racing in darlington south carolina you know maybe you should fly to charlotte and i'll pick you up like i'm not like a man of the world at this point right. you know what i mean i'm right. I'm driving a, a 92 Dodge Dually that actually belonged to Raymond King. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? a truck? Yeah. That's what it I'm became my truck, but anyway. Right. So uh, he's like, no, you don't. Peter says, you don't understand. I want to write about what you do to go racing. Now, I'm married at this point. I've got a, one kid at this point. And he's like, I'm flying to Memphis, and I'm going to ride with you. Wow. Okay. Oh, well, it's like a 12 or 13, 14-hour <laughs> drive. Like, he's like... I want to experience what you do so that I can write this story. So Donna had taken some vacation from work and was going to go with me. My Dodge Dooley, Raymond's truck, got broken into. I had to borrow, literally, like I had to borrow another friend's Dooley who decided to come with us. I worked night shift at Kroger. I got off work and went and picked him up from the airport in the morning. It's my wife. It's a friend named Marvin Trotter. I'm using his dually. And Peter Lehman, this wealthy young man that went to boarding school <laughs> and went to Northwestern. Oh. <laughs> Who's never been in this situation yeah, before. <laughs> yeah, he hadn't been. I hadn't either. You know? Right. And I drive. I'd been up all night working. I drove the entire way because we had to get there. And I can't take but X amount of time off work because I was already getting in trouble for missing days. Right. Yeah. You know, so... And he's making little notes. Why do you do this? You know, what, what's, why? You know, he's like, it's pretty obvious to me you're spending every dollar you have to do this. And I'm like, man, I want to drive a top fuel car. Well, what's that? I said, you'll see this weekend. There'll be some there. We go, you know, and he's making little notes. He's talking to people that we're running against, blah, 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 you know, all this kind of cool stuff, actually. And Things happen for a reason. Y'all are going to hear me say that a lot. I won my first IHRE national event that weekend. Wow. With the, he was a the guy writing an article about you. Nice. Witnessing it. College yeah. class thing. Yeah. yeah. So, man, he, that's the ultimate story needless, for him anyway. Yeah. Needless yeah. to say, you know, he was hooked now. Yeah. Right. And he got an A. And he got it. He actually <laughs> did. Yeah, he, he really did. He got an A. And so we became friends, like legit for real yeah. friends. He had never ate corn on the cob off of a grill. Right. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boarding school. I didn't know. Western. I didn't know what the extra forks were at a fancy restaurant. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So we were eight, we we taught each other a lot. Yeah. Yeah. He had never seen a house on wheels, and I lived in a house on wheels. Right. And I don't mean a motorhome like <laughs> right, this. Right, I lived right, in a trailer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Our yeah. engineer lives in. A- house and wheels and yeah hey I, <laughs> I i did for a long long time yeah you know yeah. and same i did too behind my grandmother's house because yeah. i couldn't afford to put it anywhere else you know <laughs> yeah it's epic so we became like I say legit for real friends and route 66 was building was being built joliet illinois you know, and the drag strip, the drag strip, yeah. not the road, not the road. Yeah. Yeah. Route 66 how, old, how old are you? Yeah. Yeah. So the road was there for a Sean while. remembers when it was. Yeah, yeah that's okay. right. <laughs> so he somehow, some way he had a connection to the Chicago White Sox and he thought it would be really cool knowing how badly I wanted to race top fuel. He thought it would be really cool if we did a top fuel race. Naturally, I thought it was awesome. Yeah as the Chicago White Sox car. So he put a deal together with Chicago White Sox, which meant I had to go get my license. And I'm getting to the answer of that question you asked about 20 minutes ago. Yeah. So May of 1998, I got my top fuel license. May 10th, 1998 to be exact. And I can remember that. I said two reasons. One, it's my sister's birthday. 
And two, I got my top fuel license. So I get my license. We do the one race. And work had really, Kroger had really been like, you've got to make a decision here. You know, what are (laughs) you doing? You're missing too many days. Union job, it's hard to get fired. But if you miss days, you can get fired. Oh, yeah, Yeah, that's right. You know, you get enough write-ups, it's it's happening. Well, Donna, my wife, uh, she's like, you need to quit. I'm like, I ain't quit. Not you know, it'll, it's going to take a long time before they fire me. You know, and I'm like, well, what are we going to do? She's like, if you don't take the chance and see if it goes, you know, you're going to hate it at some point. You got to do it. So I did. That's, I quit my job. Epic. Yeah, that is. Epic. Quit my job. How many of those conversations did you have to have with the people over you at that job before you were like, man, I'm so tired of these people talking to me like this? Uh I knew I needed the job. You know, and I just took my butt chewings. I took my write ups, right. you know, and just stayed quiet. And right. I knew the following week it was a race. And I was going to miss Friday. And I'm going to miss it again. I'm going to miss Next it week. again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> again, epic. being union job, you know, seniority is everything. Right. Right, right. So I never could ever could get Saturday, Sunday off. I didn't have enough seniority. But I was able to work night shift and get Friday, Saturday off. Dig it. So. So, I missed a lot of Sundays. Have you heard the uh, the Herb McCandless story? I've heard a lot of them. Which one? Uh, the, well, and it and it's kind of <laughs> like your position. He uh, was taking all this time off, and uh, they said, "Man, if you, you do it anymore, uh, we're going to cut you loose." And he said, "Well, that's fine." And then he was kind of done. Yep. And, and I'm sure there's more to it, but I oh, but, yeah. but it it's kind of the same thing. You yeah, know? I mean, you uh, know, opportunity came and he took yep. it. That's, yeah, that's I mean, kind of the the big reason why I I went out on my own is um, a parent-teacher conference, and I had to have a half-an-hour meeting about why I missed a day to have a parent-teacher conference. And I was like, man, I'm really tired as a grown man having to come up with a reason of why I need off to be a dad. And I was like, now I'm going to start my own deal. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not having this conversation anymore. I mean, there's so many good things and so many bad things about being your own for sure boss. But yeah, you live by the sword, die by the oh, sword 100%. kind of thing, you know. Yeah. 100%. But, yeah, yeah so we did the uh, Chicago race. I ran my first four-second quarter-mile pass. We did not qualify, by the way. I might as well tell this story, too. So I was the very first top fuel car to ever pull out on the racetrack at Route 66 Raceway. That's Super cool. cool. Yeah. Super cool, yeah. Except... I did two burnouts. I did one going forward, one going backwards. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Luckily, I broke the reverser, and uh, uh, needless to say, I didn't get. To, I was the first guy to pull out there and do a burnout. I didn't get to make a run. <laughs> I did get to go speak to Buster Couch in the tower. Buster was the oh, guy that yeah. run run the starting line. They were not real happy with me that I gave it some throttle backing up, but <laughs> that's put awesome. marks all over the asphalt. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's yeah, rubber all over the know, road. But Buster was. Uh, he was a starter for an HRA for years. 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 I Legendary. Rem- I remember him. I think it was at Memphis. It may have been Memphis. It might have been the U.S. Nationals. My dad and I went to the U.S. Nationals once. And um, Buster, I can't remember why he was doing it, but there was a there was a truck. And I don't know if it was dry hopping or something. I can't remember exactly what the deal was, but Buster jumped up on the bumper of the truck like I don't know to help it launch or something, and I remember that thing like whoop, and there goes Buster, you know, laid out, laid out, laid yeah. out on the laid <laughs> out on the, the drag oh. strip. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not familiar with, but who's who's Buster, Buster Couch was the starter. So all all NHRA uh, national events mm-hmm. are started by one guy. He, okay. He hits the button for the pros. The, yeah. Okay. For the pros. Yeah. yeah. I got so you. So he hits the button to start. You know, so it's gotcha. so it's consistent, right? Yeah. Okay, and, and, I got you. And Buster, I mean, oh, he ruled the starting line. I, yeah, it's yeah, his, it's hundred yeah. percent. Right. Okay. I mean, he 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 wouldn't. You know, he was the kind that wouldn't deal with all the goofy, yeah. you know, burn downs and all that. Ca- or, well, or 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 he, or he would he would grab his chair and sit down. Right. You know, you can find some YouTube stuff out there of him just okay. like you know Lounging. Bob Glidden and Warren Johnson or whoever you know whoever the. Whoever it is, yeah. mine wasn't actually Buster. I know what you were pointing at me about <laughs> yeah. there, but uh, yeah, we'll get into that yeah. one. <laughs> but yeah, Buster, but no. he was totally in charge of everything on the starting line. Okay, like mm-hmm. I, you know, it was stories, and I don't know that there's YouTube available, but like Chris the Greek, the Caramassini, Chris Caramassini, 
you know, would do his burnout back up and hand a, a pint to Buster, you know, oh. stuff like that. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's pretty funny. But yeah, I spent two movie. years to finish up that early part of Top Fuel. I spent two years with no job, no money coming in. Uh, back then, again, this is 98, and s- some of y'all are old enough. I'm trying to be nice here. You used to get a credit card in the mail that would come with, you know, five grand, two right. grand, thousand right. bucks. Thank God they did that because that's how we survived. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. wow. Now, Donna had a job. I mean, she's she's always been up until 2008. She was always the security blanket. Right. Like 100%, you know, she kept the insurance. She kept a that's real job. That's what my wife is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Security blanket. <laughs> Sugar know? mamas, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like your style. Exactly. But so. it was, you know, crazy. You know, you go two years with no job. And that didn't mean I wasn't racing. I wasn't racing top fuel, but I was, you know, sportsman racing. Yeah. Were you Were you bringing home some money though? No. From that? No. 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 Just racing. Just so racing. So out, outside looking in, because once you got in that seat, you, you're kind of absolved of looking at it from a spectator's. But you watch, but you're looking at it from a different angle. I love all of the nuanced things. Like I say, top fuel or even jet funny car. Even at, growing up down the street from mm-hmm. one, it's at every where there's a tower. I just love the, it's everything. It's the smells, the sights, even the smell of like the concession stands, oh, smell 100%. of burnt rubber, smell of the fuel after it's burned. So people at home that have never experienced that, like um, the shake of the windows, like when the jet funny cars are getting ready. But So they understand how, how many horsepower at top fuel are you running? So they say they're 12,000 horsepower. Right. There is not a dyno in the world that, that can, can hold one, yeah. and if there was, I wouldn't want to be in the building with it. Well, yeah. no <laughs> or the, you mean the ballistic container. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You know, uh, and that's all just done with a math formula, you know, how quick and how fast they right. can go, you know, what they weigh. Uh, there's no describing to anybody what that's like. They what? have to go to an experience event. Experience it. They have to experience what, it. So at what decibel level? Would you think? Have they measured that? They, oh, I know it has Somebody been, has and it. I should know that, but I don't. I just rem- I can. <laughs> I, I remember that. feeling that in my chest for yeah. the first time, yeah. yeah, and just thinking that is a monster in a cage. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I can give you numbers that that when you say them, it don't even make sense. So, zero to a hundred miles an hour in point eight, eight tenths of a second. Wow. It's not even one full second to go yeah. hundred miles an hour. Zero to two hundred in two seconds. And zero to three hundred in barely over three seconds. I mean, it's it's it's, a, it's enough to make kids cry. I mean, it's, 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 it's an intimidating yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah, not even from the driver's seat. To, oh, yeah. to feel the ground oh, shake there are in a tenth that, of a second. Yeah, it's it's overwhelming. Like it's, when you're that close. So, I mean, one of the coolest things for me, one of my besides being in the seat, you know, there's two places to watch from if you ever go to an event. You want to watch as close to the starting line, a couple of runs, and then as far okay. bleacher as you can get. Because at the far bleachers, it's incredible, but you will see the cars moving before you hear them. That's how right. quick they are. Yeah. You, yeah. You, they're, they're moving before you hear them. Right. Yeah. yeah. You it's know, like the space shuttle. Yeah. <laughs> they're actually quicker accelerating than the space shuttle. Yeah. Wow. That's uh, crazy. Yeah. Space shuttle is in the 4G range, and these things are in the 6G range. Uh, so there's there like breathing techniques and stuff that, you, like, I don't. I don't no, you just go. You, you just, just go. grit your teeth and you know, go. I think, without a doubt, you know it. It, it runs your adrenaline to the moon. It would have to. You That's know, why you do it. That's why we yeah, do anything exciting. Yeah, exactly. You <laughs> do know, you hold your breath? That, or do you not know? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to make me tell another story. So, yeah. I don't know. Three or four years ago. Three years ago, I think. I kept getting messages on Facebook from this guy. I get a lot of messages. We were talking about this all. <laughs> right. You know. Yeah. yeah. And I finally, like, start, because he was so persistent, you know, I, I finally started, like, checking out what he's sending me, you know, because they were like, what do you call them, direct messages, private yeah. messages, whatever, yeah. on Facebook. And I kept seeing his name over and over and over. Well, it was a kid that was going to East Tennessee State University, and he wanted to come and monitor what happens to me in the race car. Wow. Caught my attention. I'm like, this is pretty freaking cool. Yeah. Well, I'd like vest, to know that, too. You, blood yeah. pressure, everything. Yeah, all yeah. of it. They're not getting a blood pressure in that time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They'll get a before getting, and after. I was going to say, they're yeah. getting two beats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we, we worked it out. They came to, I think it was Charlotte's the first time. Well, it ended up being a, a girl come. Both of them are going to college to be doctors. Uh, and I did not know this, and, and I'm a Tennessee boy, head to toe. 
East Tennessee State University does a lot of Olympic training. I did not know that. Oh, wow. Like Olympic athletes, that's somewhere they go to for their fitness programs. Cool. So anyway, I work, you know, I, I, I'm like, all right, I want to find this all out. And I know you were asking, you know, all the, I, don't, I don't really know, but I started wearing this thing when they were there. They would check my blood. They take a blood sample and a urine sample before every run, and they just they come to a half a dozen races, and we learned a lot. I still don't know the answer to your question, but what what I do know is that my heart rate is at the highest during the burnout, huh. and it comes back it down back for the down. run. Wow. So that's very interesting. Yeah. A lot of people that are into their craft like that, and I, if you've read any of the sniper books you know i have uh chris kyle they did the similar thing yeah and they wanted to find out the metrics on him biologically and he was anxious all the way up until the point where he actually started doing his job and his blood pressure dropped and his heart rate dropped and it was just focused the whole time i guess same kind of thing thing. you know burnout is is pre pre pre-job so to speak you know but we learned a lot uh i was always that guy and most guys are we have millie coming to visit (laughs) yeah (laughs) Uh, that I thought on race day, you know, you want to be hungry. And I don't mean like mentally. Right. Just like literally not eat. Right. Because I thought that hunger, that what is it, hanger, hangry? Yeah. Hangry. Hangry. I thought that was the way to be. You know, you're a little on edge, you're a little, you know, charged up, blah, yeah. blah, you know. Well, they they just went with what I was doing because they were gathering information. Then they started encouraging me you know, eat a little increase something. your sugar intake. Yeah, yeah. Eat a little something. Well, you know, I was blah, watching blah. some of your yeah. your some of your videos mm-hmm. where you were talking about. Oh well, I gotta eat. I gotta eat now because you know. Yep. Uh, they're saying it's that my blood sugar's low blood sugar or whatever yeah, and yeah. stuff yep. like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, we learned that through you know the blood test. Right. And so it's super fascinating, and it also made me become a workout guy for yeah. like the last three years. Now yeah. I work out, not to be a, a big dude, you know, but just, just fit. Fit. Yeah. yeah. Breathing, you you won't pass out in a top fuel car. I mean, you're a fireman, you know a lot of this stuff. But as long as you're accelerating, in I've a never st- done 300 miles. Now. Well, no, <laughs> but you kind of understand yeah. body stuff, you oh, know. Yeah. But as long as you're accelerating in a straight line, yeah. you will not pass right. out. Uh, I, I was fortunate enough a few years ago. I rode with the the Thunderbirds, so I've, I've yeah, done right. that. Yeah. I know what that's like, and that's a it's different a different G. sensation. Yeah, totally you're different. Talking, you're talking about yeah, three yeah. dimensional G where you're pulling up. Yep. and, and you know, and, and it's pushing your body right. down. That's yeah. what makes you pass out. Did you hurl? I made it. <laughs> I made it. I did multiple nine G turns. Wow. Nine G's. Uh, so you got so did you have go over the coaching and the breathing with that when you yeah, do that. Yeah, it's so cool. You so, bear down while you're yeah. banking in so your turn. It was really cool. You spend an hour with the flight team, which mm-hmm. means you get your G suit. They fit you for all that stuff. You spend an hour with the pilot, which was a waste of time uh, <laughs> because our all he wanted to do was talk about top fuel cars, which was cool, <laughs> right? You know. <laughs> But my training. You're with like, the, is there something I should know here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was. Yeah. My training yeah. with him was: you see that yellow handle between your legs? Don't, yeah. Don't pull that. Don't touch it. <laughs> yeah, right. Don't touch it. If I pull mine, you're coming with me. Yeah. You know? but, yeah. And then an Trying hour not to goose you. You don't want yeah. to. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But and then you end up spending an hour with a doctor, where you know they they whatever that you get a physical. Yeah. yeah. Make so, sure that you can do it. Yeah, and he's yeah. like. Do you remember Hans and Franz on Saturday Night Live? I'm like, sure, I do. And he's like, wild and crazy guy. He's like, when the uh, when the pilot tells you to be ready, imagine Hans and Franz constipated. Oh, yeah. And that's how you keep yeah. from passing out. Did yeah. that? That's yeah. what he told yeah, you. Bear, you bear down. Yeah. Yeah. You bear down. Yeah. So, so did you get the you get the medal for the nine so G's? What I got, and it's really cool, is I've got this beautiful poster signed by my pilot and the, the flight crew and it's got really cool handwriting of my name and it's got a 9.1 9.4 yeah. wow yeah that. that's, that's pretty cool, cool. Yeah. yeah so uh uh jeff smith who was mm-hmm. there hot rod for a long time we worked with um he he got to ride with them and he was talking about how the first pull they did like 8.7 g's or something and um and the the pilot was really pushing him to do it again so they could get to nine G's. And he was like, you know, why, why, whatever. But it was all for the, so that yeah, he could get, get, get the pin. So he, could get the pin. Yep. So yeah. he might've rode with the blue angels, blue angels. So I rode with the Thunderbirds. Okay. So that's yeah. probably so a little bit different. So 
Cool. Millington. Oh, yeah. Millington. Blue so, Angels. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. We, we went every year. You know, you go to the Navy Air base, show. back yeah. to their show, yeah. you know. Back Coming when, back this year on June 16th uh, or Are they really? There. Yeah. I actually, I started uh, volunteering then full-time at the Millington Fire Department, mm-hmm. and we got to do air crash for Blue Angels, which is a dream come true. Yeah. Like, when you grow up and see them, yeah. and then you meet them all, and they travel. I forgot the name of this, AC-130. You might know it. Fat it, Albert. Fat Albert. Yeah. And it yes. was almost an all-female crew that was um, crewing that. Be that dang. day I sat there. So when I became a pro, you know, I, I was telling Peter Lehman and anybody else that would listen, I want to ride with the Blue Angels. I grew up I grew up here. So, you know, I'm not in the service, never have been, but I consider myself kind of a Navy guy. Yeah. We all should yeah, if we right. grew up here. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah. You know, and so it ends up, it works out. He's a Navy guy. Yeah. I'm a real Navy guy. Oh. <laughs> well, I, thank you for your service. I mean, oh, yeah. thanks, Clay. Yeah, I have two retired Navy people right, right in this house, right here, right wow. at the end of the street. I've got another retired Navy guy. I mean, yeah. I, and none of them were from here. People, yeah, yeah they were I in. see people. I, I've got to finish my story. Go ahead. I see people all the time when I'm signing autographs. They'll say, "Where are you from?" And I'll say, "Near Memphis." If I say Drummonds, nobody knows where it is. Right. And if they say, "Oh, you know Millington." I immediately say thank you for your service. Oh yeah, right. wow! Yeah. Largest inland naval base in the world it used for to years. Be. It was. You know, yeah. I grew up on that base. It was yeah. cool. It was this little own city. Yeah, for, best place for a family navy to. Yeah. Be. Yeah. So to finish my story there, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna bounce. This is what yeah. we do, by the way. Don't feel yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. gonna get back to we're that. All, first, let's yeah. talk about how he was in the navy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're all ADD, so it'll oh, go everywhere. It's perfect. Yeah. So I'm spending time with all these, you know. Thunderbird guys, Air Force guys, you know, where are you from? I'd say Drummond's Tennessee. I already knew this. I'd kind of been warned a little bit by some Navy friends. You know, they're like, man, they're going to know where you're from, you know, that whole Navy Air Force, you know, right. conflict thing, yeah. you know. And so they, they'd go back to the, you know, asking me about racing and da da da. And they're like, where are you from again? I'm like, Tennessee, you know, Drummond's. <laughs> they finally pinned me down. <laughs> the pilot's like, Navy boy, you'll be throwing up soon. Oh, nice. <laughs> but I made it. Nice. I made it. Absolutely. And back to the 8.7G thing. So I don't know what planes they're in now. I, this when I rode it was F-16, and they're 9G limited by the computer. Those wow. planes will turn quick enough, hard enough to break the wings off. Ooh. Oh, what? yeah, they will turn. So the computer stops the turn and stops it at 9 g Before you shear the wings. Before you shear the wings. Right. Wow. I got a 9.1 and 9.4, and the pilot told me you can, if you turn quick if enough, you goose it, it, yeah. it, it, it'll it jump past the computer limit. And the 9.4 come because we had done I, almost an hour of flying, so the fuel was light, so he was able to whip, whip it real it. quick. Yeah. Now, they have to warn you. They, oh. they could get you. If they want to make you pass out, they could get you. Yeah. Shoot, right. yeah. You know? yeah. But it's an amazing, unbelievable thing. I mean, but these guys are these guys do this for a living, eh, extreme G's. Yeah, and they're fascinated about you because they're like, yeah. hey, well, it's yeah, a different you're, G. You're, you're, you know? it's a different G. And they're like, you're basically an airplane without wings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. You know, so the I finish my ride, and they do the whole thing. You, if y'all have been to the show, you know, the the flight crew comes by, salute you, shake it's like make your hair stand up kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And they do that with me, you know, and I'm yeah. like, man, this is so freaking cool. <laughs> so you got your pilot that you rode with beside you and the doctor is on each side. And they're like, are you all good? You know, I'm like, yeah. I said, my butt's tingling. They started laughing. Like your butt's tingling. I said, yeah, it feels like after I got paddling in school, you know, right. you remember that tingling yeah. after yeah. and they're laughing. They're like, that's G kisses. I'm like, G kisses. What's that? And they're like, you'll see. <laughs> so I finished shaking everybody's hand, salute. You know, I didn't salute. I shook hands, but they saluting, you know. Doctor's like, all right, come on, boy. Let's go. <laughs> Get out of that flight suit. So I go to back to wherever we were at. We was in Toledo, Ohio is where I did this. But anyway, we go back in this room. My clothes are there, and I'm hopping out of my flight suit. And he's like, drop them. This is the doctor. I'm like, what? And he's like, got to check out them G kisses. <laughs> I'm like, are you serious? And he's like, I'm a doctor. Yes, drop them. <laughs> right. Pull my old tidy whities down, and, he, and he's like, take a look. So I'm like looking backwards at my butt, and it looked, my entire, both butt cheeks looked like a hickey. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like a waffle. Yeah, <laughs> like, like a like hickey. Like the pattern of the... 
Was it the pattern of no, the seat? No, or it, just, was just, no it was the blood. It was just yeah, so much. He was just straight. clinching yeah. that hard. Yeah. I, 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 it's not yeah. from clinching, actually. It's from, it's from the blood drop. Yeah. Yeah. So what it is, and Pressure. the doctor said it's the same as a hickey, that right. it's, it busts the blood vessels near the surface of your skin. Right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And it, that's what a hickey is. Yeah. 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 Right. And it, my dead. whole butt did that. Capillary wow. hemorrhage. Yeah. Yeah. I had a so, similar story like that in the Navy. Uh, you yeah. can't. Uh, was it, was yeah. it in, no, was it no, in Tijuana? They were, they, were, they, were, they were out at yeah. sea. Yeah. No, no, it was, it's classified. Yeah. Exactly. So on the way he home. He wasn't going fast. <laughs> yeah. He was going too fast. <laughs> okay. The, uh, <laughs> all right. <we're, laughs> let's get back on track. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so on the way home, are you listening to like the Tom, the Top Gun soundtrack? <laughs> oh <laughs> man, like, I was. I would have been. Would be, uh, <laughs> I was so ripped. Just up. on the on the car, just yeah. acapella. Da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I get to the racetrack. We were actually racing in Norwalk that weekend. Uh, Funny, I just told a Bader story. but So I get to the racetrack. I'm telling them all about it. You know, we did this and this, you know, and, and I tell them the G-Kisses thing. They're like, ah, bull crap. And you pull like, your pants down. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes. <laughs> absolutely. Like, there you go. You, you know? got to see it. It was a yeah. purple moon that night. <laughs> so <laughs> so the, uh, the pilot said early in the season he gets G-Kisses on his elbows. And that's where his... Oh, that's where it manifested. Yeah, yeah for him. Yeah. Wow. And he said, you know, it goes away as the season goes. And now that I... I mean, you know, now that I know what g kisses are, you get them a little bit in different spots in the top field car first part of the season. And you never knew that. Just didn't Did, know it. Yeah. yeah. I just thought, oh, it's a bruise. That's you know, like bruise. my Hans device yeah, right. or whatever. Yeah. From parachutes, you know. Wow. wow. Yeah. So, because, man, so rewinding a bit. Yes. What was it like getting your first paycheck for drag racing? Oh, man. I... That's funny. So it was Peter Lehman, and my f- when he bought all the equipment to go top fuel racing, again, I had quit my job, didn't work for two years. So, th- so that was 98. So 99 and part of going into 2000, he bought a team, bought all the equipment. And I made $18,000 a year. That's, That's what, what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, sir. Made way more at Kroger. <laughs> but you were a pro. You were I was a, a pro. pro. I was a paid pro and did not care. Right, you know yeah. what I mean? I did yeah. not care. And so Peter was essentially funding it initially out of his pocket. And, you know, People with money aren't going to do that very long. They're going to figure out how to make it work. That's right. You know, that's, that's what they do. That's yeah. why they have money. Right. And so he put the deal together. That, again, this was 2000, you know, and he put... He found this company he was working with somehow, some way, that was going to. Now, again, you got to go back 21 years to 2000. Dot com was a big deal. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it is, everybody's dot com, dot com. Well, this company was going to sell auto parts online, which was like, what? Unheard, <laughs> unheard of. You yeah. can't yeah. do that. Well, It'll yeah. never work. It'll never take off. Yeah. <laughs> it never went live. Oh. Wow. Could have been mean, the first. Yeah, could have been the first. Eauto.com huh. is yeah. who it was. And they yeah. never went, it never actually. I wonder what happened. Went to fruition. I wonder what happened with that. Somebody so dropped the dot ball com in. went dot bomb in 2000. Like oh. all, all these funds yeah. that were paying, you know, they're buying all the names, they're doing yeah. all this. It's interesting. They lost their funding. It's very interesting to do that and then go back and think about all the things that were surrounding the big blackout that was supposed to happen in 99 yeah, yeah. and you wonder yeah. if it was tied into that market like a lot of tech stocks on. did poorly Hor- horrible because you know? they were yeah. the end of the world was supposed to happen te- yeah. technology wise yeah. yeah so where where were y'all at i was on bill street was you on bill street <laughs> absolutely i was hoping the, the lights would turn i was out. in the french quarter in new orleans sean number two i don't even remember you don't remember what? how do you not remember when Y2K? i did not remember I matt yeah. Yeah. yeah he was, that was a baby. He was still I was suckling. A, I, was at, I was at a party in Millington, and, uh, and I think we were listening to Prince. Oh, party. everybody oh, listened yeah, to yeah, Prince yeah, that yeah, year. Yeah. yeah. I, can that, tell, that, that, I can tell you I was doing that. I don't know yeah, what. I don't but remember I'm going to be like, but how legitimately, this was senior year for me. So, like, it was a big deal. Like, everything, this could be the oh, end of the world. End yeah. of the world. So, y'all want to know what I was doing? What? I was watching Shirley Muldowney. Race Big Daddy Don Garland's. Really? Right at, right at the drop? Right 
at the freaking twelve o'clock. So she would. So she would have won life if that had been the end of the. She'd been <laughs> doing the things she loved, yeah. three hundred miles an yeah. hour. Then the apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was because a, of her. Or was it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she saved us. She saved yeah. us. Big Daddy and Shirley raced at midnight. 1999 no into 2000. I don't wow. remember that. Why Think do I not know that? Special because event? it was the biggest flop of in the world. The so, race wow. or, the pro- or the promotion for that? The, everything. <laughs> it, it was, so like, so they promoted it. It was a as, oh, yeah. These two are going to be racing at, yeah, wow, at really. midnight. It yep. was like Al Capone's vault. Yeah. Do you remember yeah. that? Uh, yeah. No, no, yeah. no this, I don't. <laughs> Auto Fest was the name of this deal. It was yeah. in West Palm Beach. I think we were in West Palm Beach. Yeah, West Palm Beach. Me, Donna, and... and Kids, we all went down there. I was driving a car owned by Donnie Holbrook, guy out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, and they were paying us to come match race. Paying Donnie, really. All I got was a free trip, which I didn't care. I'm yeah. getting to drive a top fuel car. And I think it was supposed to pay, I think Donnie was supposed to make 10 grand for three runs or whatever it was. Got zero. Mm. There was, this guy had bands playing he had you know like some fair rides going wow and you got to think about this who's going to come on the end of the world to a race nobody <laughs> nobody <laughs> you're on bill street probably drinking no no, no i don't drink you don't drink either yeah, okay yeah, well you're on bill street having fun yeah. drinking water. you were probably watching i mean playing prince and everybody you i know, was drunk i guarantee yeah. you i was drunk yeah i don't know where i was it was <laughs> well, after was, two o'clock <laughs> i know you were yeah, yeah. You, were, you were 100 what were you 130 130 yeah. years old yeah, was probably 130 then yeah. 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 yeah yeah but i mean it's it's it was a horrible failure yeah. i got Legal documents for years and years and years. Everybody suing. Trying to sue I, I, this wasn't, guy. I wasn't suing him because I, I I wasn't getting paid anyway, you know. Right. But yeah. but I was getting all this stuff, and nobody ended up getting nothing. The only people that got paid was Big Daddy and Shirley because they got their money up front. Ah, yeah. right. smart. Yeah. smart. That's experience. Yeah. Scotty Cannon was there. I mean, it was a bunch of big name drag racers, but wow. no people came. Nobody. Wow. wow. Yeah. But I mean, I don't. It was, a peer, it was a yeah. peer. You got race. to see that race. I got to see at that the stroke yeah. of midnight. Yeah, absolutely. So that you could then That's tell us about it. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. It sounds awesome. Yeah. You know, oh, it was. You know? It was awesome because you had no crowd to wait through to watch anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right? It was just a bunch yeah. of peers yeah. racing each other for yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah, it was just a bunch of dudes hanging yeah. out in the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. You know? It was high school all over again. Yeah. yeah. As soon as they hit eighty eight miles an hour, they were gone. Yeah. Oh my god. I hadn't thought about that in forever, but that's epic. That's super cool. That is Funny. There was yeah. another scam like that that happened around that t- same time. That guy that was going to have the biggest island party. Do you remember this? Oh, yeah. What well, was that, it called? that was fairly recent, though. I'd say fairly, Sean. It was, was like that uh, Epstein guy? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different kind D- of party. Different island. <laughs> hit the beat, hit the beat that party. Hit the beat <laughs> YouTube's going to kick us off. Right? <laughs> yeah. There's, I'm pretty sure there's red words you can't use, and that's probably one of them. I think that place is for sale, you know. No, you not that one. It get was it that, cheap. I know, you know what you're talking about. It was an MTV about. thing. Uh, unfortunately, I know who else was involved. Ja Rule was one of the promoters. Yeah, yeah. Don't ask why. I, mean. I, I, yeah. I watched the documentary on that. Yeah, I know exactly it was a huge about. scam thing. Like yeah. People started showing up to the island, and they didn't have uh, didn't anything. Have a place? No. no bathrooms, no, and they were stranded. There was wow. No, it was amazing. Wow. Kind of like Evil Knievel's yeah, jump that. over the uh, Snake River. Yeah. That guy got, he got right. hurt. Though. Right. That guy got hurt. Oh. He got hurt doing that. <laughs> did he? I don't think he, he did. He always got hurt, did he? <laughs> well, I know he cried. Yeah. Well, he, that, he would make jumps that he knew yeah. he couldn't make. So yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> that was his whole sales pitch. Yeah. I'm like gonna... When he first jumped the snakes, the box of snakes in front of the dealership, like he knew he couldn't do it. He had never done it before. He didn't care if he wrecked. Hot, hot. He just knew that people would come and see it. Yeah. yeah. But you know who I used to get, and you guys can jump all over me, uh, Super Dave. Remember? Super Dave yeah, Osborne. Super Dave Osborne. Osborne. Yeah. Uh, I almost, maybe he was more my generation, but I liked I liked his personality a little bit more than Knievel. Go ahead. Throw, hit the, oh, please, no, un, please, un, please unfriend me. <laughs> I, I was, evil I was, was the man. I, awful can awful. Yeah, Loved evil him. was the man. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's hilarious. Yeah. He was, uh, without a doubt, one of the biggest names in the world yeah. when we were kids. Next oh, to yeah. Elvis. Yeah. Elvis and Evil Canada. Well, that was cool. They I were kind of, there's a parallel between those There guys. is. Yeah. Even their hairstyles towards the end. There you go. And That's their because, jumpsuits. That's, That's because it. Evil yes. Knievel looked up to Elvis. He wanted to be like Elvis. Yep. 
Yeah, but with crashing easy. cars. But with crashing cars, I I yeah. can respect it. A little less talk, a lot more so crashing. All right. I'm gonna yep. start wearing a jumpsuit right. with a cape. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a good look for you. Oh, that's man. Per- that's perfect. I know where your shop's hey. at. You're gonna get confused as a pimp. I don't yeah. think you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, it won't fly I, over I think on Hollywood. Yeah. 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 Well, I was gonna say we could get the picture of you with the uh, uh, home of Mike Abbott. Hernando sign, home yeah, yeah. Of Mike Abbott. So, so oh, tell yeah, us yeah, about yeah. this like, sign. Tell us yeah. about this sign when we were driving in. Says home of Clay Milliken. How do you how do you get a sign like that? Oh, yeah, there's a, there's a crash one right up on. There's the wall a crash one up there. How yeah. do you get a oh, sign? No. How do you get a city to put a sign like that up? <laughs> well, Drummond's is it's a community. It's not right. even really a city, and I don't know the local people. They love me. They <laughs> yeah. That's super awesome. And they yeah. just decided to put it up. That but you know epic. what was you know what was really really cool what they did uh, you know the road commissioners and you know county commission all these people that that did this you know they asked me where I wanted the sign. There's two of them actually. Right. Where do you want them at? I'm wow. like really. That's awesome. So again, Drummond's is is not a town. It's a community. Right. Yeah. And growing up, me and my my. My buddies, my running buddies, we always considered Drummond's that water tower. Right. So when we got on the other side of the water tower, even though it's technically not, that was Munford. You know, you were going to Munford, which is where we went to high school. Right. But we considered that the that's cutoff. That's the that's cutoff. The cutoff. Yeah. And this way, there is a uh, it's a little building down here that Millington Telephone is like a, a junction. I don't know what it is, but it's a Millington Telephone building that nobody works in. Right. It's just like where all the wires come to. That was yeah. the spot on Quito Road. Yeah. Mm. So that was the end. So, so you put them where Drummond started. You know where you're coming in. Yeah. That to us, that was Drummond. Yeah. You still hang out with those buddies? Oh, 100 percent. That's awesome. Man. So my longest, dearest, bestest friend's name's J.C. Matters. He uh, he and I were friends before first grade, literally like we were running buddies before first grade. We went small school, you know, not that a lot of yeah. people. So we had every class together. I got my job at Kroger in '88, I guess it was '87, '88, whatever. Within six months, he was working there because I got him a job there. Right. I worked there for eleven years. He worked there ten years, six months. When I quit, he quit. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. And but he's not a top fuel driver. No, but he's got a lot more money than I do. Yeah. <laughs> what did he break off and do after he left? Don't ask me why. Again, me and him literally are close as any brothers on the planet. He went into the cabinet building business. Mm-hmm. That's a good line of work. Good line of work. And obviously, this whole part of the state's booming. Has yeah. been for decades now. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, it's a, a running joke, but he become you know a slumlord. He, he has rentals. Yeah. You know he's got rentals all over. And yeah, yeah. When I need money, that's who I call. Absolutely, <laughs> call your longest friend. <laughs> yeah, hey, man. yeah. And has nothing to do with racing. But since we're talking about JC, so me and Donna lived in a, a house. So I told you, Mom Day stores eighth mile away, a thousand foot away was my grandmother's house, and our trailer was in her backyard. Well, she decided to move to Florida when she was very old to move, to live with her daughter. And so me and Donna bought the house, paid $25,000 for it. That's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's, it's, it's not as big as this shop is. Right. You know, it's a little bitty house. It's still there. Yeah. And so the racing thing came and I'm like, you know, can you make a living doing this, this sort of thing? And finally, you know, after a few championships, we're like, okay, we're going to build a new house. So what do I do? I go a thousand foot this side of my old house, and we bought this spot here. Yeah, problems going past a thousand feet. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 Anywhere where it was the sign, quarter mile back anywhere then. within the signs post. Yeah, yeah, where you're right. yeah exactly. Right. So there's so many houses being built. JC thinks maybe I want to build houses along with building cabinets. So he built my house for me for wow. free. Oh, wow. really? Yeah. Dang now, like, that. he didn't nail it right, right, necessarily, yeah, right. but he did it. Like, yeah. contract. Yeah, he yeah, did yeah, it already, all. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Him, him and Donna, my wife, actually. Yeah. And he's he like, can nah. be my best friend if he wants to yeah, come build mine. Exactly. Oh, he, wow. he decided the only, other, only other house he built was his own. Yeah. And he's that like, much nah. Of that, huh? Yeah. He's like, I'll just stay in the cabinet business. And he's been very, very successful at it. Absolutely. So, That's awesome. So, I can't come to Drummond's without saying uh, hello, Scooter Russell. Yep. So, when you're watching this and Johnny Craig, yeah. You know, we had talked about those guys earlier. So, you know, yeah. Scooter and Johnny? I do. I have known Scooter essentially since he was born. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. For wow. Real. 
Okay. So his mom and daddy shopped at the store every every day. Dig that. No yep. kidding. Yep. No kidding. I mean, he's whatever. He's less than a mile from here. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I feel. I, I like. I said. I feel guilty. If about we run through the him. woods, we could get there real quick. <laughs> yeah. It's not very far. Don't recommend it in the yeah. country to do I, it, that. At yeah. some point, we need to show bring him on the show because I'm telling you, he he's got just he's, a dynamic personality. He does, and he is uh, he's a mess. Yeah. Let's just say that yeah, he is. He is a mess. He's he's a mess. He's a this is a bad term these days, but he's a hustler. He right? is, absolutely. He, he's, he's a go-getter. And I don't necessarily mean a job. Right. I love you, Scooter, but you just he just he he's not a job kind of guy. He right. hustles. Yeah. And yeah. he takes care of his family very well. He yeah. does. But he works his tail off, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah. Buys and sells and <laughs> yeah. he, it's uh, constant. We're going to go to his shop one day, guys. You, you'll it, love it. Yeah, it's it, cool. We know, cool. We know the way there now. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It's literally, you just go to the stop sign, turn left, left. He's just yeah. right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Scooters always had cool cars. Yeah. Like his daddy had cool cars, you know, so it's mm-hmm. just kind of scooter. So yeah. is cars just drag racing for you? You into hot rods? You into customs? You into anything uh, like that? I see that I, little. I was little say, well, obviously yeah, we got yeah. Yeah. We let it. On. Can we talk about that? That's a yeah, YouTube, can, yeah. YouTube build yeah. going on. Right I, got, I got a couple of builds going. I appreciate hot rods, customs, rat rods. I appreciate all of it. I am a drag racer. I mean, plain right. and simple, I'm a, I'm a drag racer. This build behind us is a YouTube project. I, I, I was telling y'all that before we went live. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Clay Milliken on YouTube, right? It's, yeah, it's Clay, just, yeah, everything's Clay my everything's yeah. my name. You right. know, it's on the socials. On yeah, the socials. they wouldn't they wouldn't allow me to do that. So yeah, that's all right. <laughs> the Sean Barrington podcast? No, <laughs> yeah, that's a hard pass for me. Buddy. I don't care how old you are or how how in with the vampire coven you are. <laughs> right, right, right. You're not oh. doing that. But I I love anything that makes noise and tire smoke. You know, you name it. But this truck was supposed to be Donna's garbage truck or go to the you know landfill truck whatever. I was telling you it was a seven hundred dollar fine on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> that when it came home, all I was supposed to do was put another V six in it, and she's got her you know now a what a twelve thirteen hundred dollar truck fourteen hundred dollar truck whatever right. it is. I can't do that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know that. it's uh, just not in me. Your- <laughs> now with that being said, I have worked on this thing i don't know over a year now and yeah i was gonna say that's like yeah. a mopar thing i think because yeah. uh, my buddy chris has got like three mopars that he still has nothing running yeah well like, i've just drove keeps this tearing, one. yeah just keeps I drove tearing it apart i drove it to the river and back of another friend of mine big big youtube channel pfi speed he mm. came he came in because he's a tuner like that that's right. what his channel is kind of based around tuning and i am not an electronic fuel injection guy me i'm neither. not me neither so I wanted to put a, a Hemi in it. I can't afford a 426 Hemi. Nobody can. <laughs> right. You know. So I put a Gen 3 Hemi in this thing, and you kind of, it's just easier to put electronic fuel injection on it. So we did. Brent flew in. We got it started, and we drove it to the river, open headers, six-speed manual. Yes. I was, I was ripping it up down down to, to the river bottom and back. Put it on the dyno the next day, and 100% smoked a piston out of it, and here she sits, and it wouldn't have been sitting this long except order parts right now. Yeah, we right. had a whole conversation about sure. that on one of our yeah, yeah. cast yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah, just supply chain, man. Yeah, yeah um, I couldn't find. I was putting a T five together for my pickup, and I just couldn't get anything for it. I know it's and crazy. Yeah, it's a common transmission. Just couldn't get it. So since we're kind of a Memphis based show, and I did talk about this on on my last YouTube about Baby D. Yeah. Every, everything's kind of got a name, Baby D. I like it. St- it's. Uh, Back to the Friday movies. There you go. Yeah, Baby so D. You don't know Baby D. Yeah. Yes. You don't know Baby D. That's why you're, <laughs> you're, trying that's to why make, you're saying yeah, that. You're trying to get the, the big sister and the little sister, you know, <laughs> yeah. and all that. But Cops don't know when to kick the door. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I bought the engine for Baby D from Impala Motors right there in Frazier. Yeah. Mike, he's a cool guy. So anyway, I burned the thing up. Like I say, drove it, you know, 14, 15 miles, burned it up on the dyno in four or five pulls. I still blame Brent. Kind of joking, but I kind of. <laughs> Iggy loves bottles, <laughs> by the way. Got an alcoholic dog. That's I do. <laughs> hey, he looks like Spuds McKenzie for a reason. That's right. That's exactly right. That's exactly Looking for right. a surfboard and his sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I stopped by Impala Motors the other day. You know, it's income tax time. And I'm not, I'm not saying whatever, but my kid, Kale, he's, 
he didn't get the car gene. Like he, the kid yeah. can't drive. Right. He he just can't drive. Uh, he, yeah. he, he he's had a few crashes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I'm gonna swing by Impala here and see if Mike's got you know something that matches his income tax check. Right. You know. <laughs> yeah. For sure. And Mike started laughing. He's like, Dude, ain't nobody got no used cars. You can't find cars, new ones, used ones, whatever. Uh, yeah. You know, it's just the way of the world right now. We chit chat a little while, and finally he asked me about how'd the motor do. Like, I bought it from him, you know, 2018 model, 5,000 miles. Like, this is a primo freaking piece. And I told him, and he's like, oh, man, I feel bad. I'm like, don't feel bad. I tear up motors for a living. That's right. what I do. You know, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. no big deal. Not right. a big deal at all. Long story short, sitting over here is a greasy 2014 cop car 5.7 that I could not leave the parking lot until he gave it to me. Yeah. Like he just Good gave it him, to me, man. you know. Yeah. He, awesome, what a guy. Yeah, you know, like I, I don't want it. And this is not how you stay in business, and blah blah. He's like, don't care. You're not leaving without it. He's like, Epic. it's probably a block crank rods or something you can use there. So, yeah. so that's a yeah. that's a five seven Hemi. Five seven Hemi. Yeah. So my wife has a uh, Durango RT with a Hemi in it, and this is her first car to have any. You know, it's kind of a hot rod right. for her. Yeah, but that car is a bullet, man. Oh yeah, for a family car, it is yeah. freaking awesome, man. So. So I've already mentioned comp cams. I'm gonna mention them some more. Yeah. <laughs> the Hemi, the Gen Three Hemi stuff is yeah. their number two seller right now. Those wow. things are coming. Like they, yeah, they are. They well, are the, the number one. Would there's be like also. LS, LS, I would say there's also LS a lot of people one. trashing them out there. Oh so, yeah. You know what well, I mean? Like, I tell you, if I put a cam in my wife's car, it would be my ass. Well, I mean, you are. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, you know, supposedly that's the downfall of them stock. Is they have a cam and lifter problem? See, there's oh, you go. You so, just so I might, I might have, have to. to. Oh, I, have to. I had sorry, to put a cam in it. Sorry, <laughs> it's a safety issue. <laughs> Routine yeah. maintenance. Uh, first day I met, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. First time I met him, he wrecked his wife's car. A brand new car. I mean, <laughs> pulling into my shop. Pulling yeah. into my shop. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uninsured motorist just tagged me. Um, I was and, and he stayed. Yeah, I don't understand. I was, that. I was turning right into the parking lot, and he thought that I was going to turn left and zipped around to the right and tagged me, you know, and I was just, you got to be kidding me. It didn't look that bad until the wheel wouldn't turn. Yeah. <laughs> broke a tie rod, yeah. but like bent a tie rod. The oh. car was two said, weeks old, yeah. man. He said, you I know. can limp it home. He pulled it back and started off cha -ching, down cha -ching. Uh, Hollywood, and he was skipping. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he pulled it, skirt, skirt. he pulled it right back in. I don't think I can take this home. But, I, <laughs> man, I love that car. I, this is my first Dodge. Oh, no kidding. It, yeah, my very first Dodge, and that it's a great car, man. Great car. I'm a Mopar guy, but the Gen 3s are coming. I mean, yeah. they, they really are. The, the heads actually flow, I'm told, as good or better. Most people say better than the LS stuff. Wow. So and it, yeah. it's very similar to an LS. It really, really is. Yeah. The thing that trips me out about them, and I know this is not a tech show. We're supposed to be telling stories. No, no this is good. it. The push no rods in that thing are only like six inches long. Sure. Wow. Really? And the lifters go in flat, almost like almost flat. Wow. I can show you here in a minute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like they, they got a slight angle, but very, it's weird. Yeah. Epic. You know, you what's know? interesting to me is that, uh, coming from clay, every pick apart, pull apart after this podcast, whoever watches it, they're going to up their prices on the Hemi stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, so that's how you go fast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, but it's really going fast though with where that engine went. Oh yeah, it's it's going to come back much better than it left. Yeah. That's for sure. Where is it now? So the engine, I got to tell that story. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm just full of stories, which is perfect <laughs> for podcasts. That's, that's, that's why we're here. Perfect for podcasts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So I became friends with a guy named David Fryberger. Y'all may have heard yeah, of I him. Know yeah. David Fryberger. Yeah. Yep, Fryberger's awesome, and he knew I was Mopar crazy. Iggy is like searching through everybody's bags here, I looking see. for the yeah. camera gear. Yeah. <laughs> Put them up high. Yeah. The, uh, so Freiberger's telling me, he's like, all right, you know, you're, you're, you're obviously eat up with the Mopar thing. You need to meet Mike Copeland. Mike Copeland owns a company called Arrington Performance, which is they are like the Gen 3 Hemi place. They're, okay. the, they're the place for the Gen 3 Hemis. And so Baby, D, <clears throat> Baby D's engine made its way to uh, Arrington Performance, and it'll come back as a 392. Oh, cool! Yeah. Dig that. So what? Okay, the three ninety two and the five seven block are the block the same? Or is it the displacement? How, how did they get to that? So motor? a five seven 
is 345 cubic inches. Yeah. And I think it is the 6.4. I feel like something got quiet here, y'all. Yeah. It, uh, Iggy done unplugged I- I- Iggy's stuff. all up in the cable. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear myself. Is, is it dinner time? I think. <laughs> well, I, I can. All How about right. now? There we go. Uh, uh, golden. Golden. Okay. All right. So I think it is the 6.4 liter. Okay. That is the 392. Okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, and and I guess the block are the uh, same family. Same family, hundred uh, percent. Okay. All I do know is is I'm new into this Gen three Hemi, so I'm still in the learning process. Yeah. But Mike Copeland told me that if you get one, you want a 2011 and up because it has better cylinder heads. So they flow better. They're a better okay. head. And so when you're on the search, you want an 11 up. Okay. 11 and newer. So I've, I've got a, a 1955 Hemi. So it's completely <laughs> different. Is that 354? No, uh, yeah, 331. 331. 331. Yeah, wow. Yeah. A uh, Model A Roadster that I'm putting, putting That'll together. That'll be cool. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. That's about coming it. over to the shop soon. That'll be I really hope cool. so, man. I That's, hope it'll so. It'll be sitting right next to my sedan doing nothing. I know. Nothing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like Baby D is doing. <laughs> Baby D is going to be on the road before my sedan. Yeah. I promise you. This that. thing's getting worked on. It is. It's just, like I say, uh, Mike's having trouble getting pistons. Yeah. You know, that's just all there is to it. Well, I mean, I've built my car a thousand times in my head. Oh, 100%. <laughs> like, this thing, though, to kind of get back to what we were talking about on this thing, I don't. I didn't have a plan for it other than in the off season, which is very short, I got to have, I have to have something to do. Like, you, right. yeah. you got to have a project, yeah. you know. So, my other project, which is way more involved, is been at Jeff Lutz's shop for three years now. What's that? Oh, mercy. Yes. It is a 2004 four-door Dodge truck, two-wheel drive, and it was Dalton's truck. My son, we lost a son in 2015, and it was my truck that became his truck, and okay. it got named, it's named Dentley, because you give a truck to a teenager, it's going <laughs> dented to get, up. It's Dentally. dented up. Yeah. It's, and it was literally dented up everywhere. Was it called Dentley before? Yeah, it was. Okay. His, Him and his buddies actually named it Dentley, <laughs> which tells you they didn't care how they treated it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so you're not starting with a lot then, are you? <laughs> well, fast forward to him getting a, drive, a job driving f- for failed entertainment in Monster Jam. He started making money. Oh, okay. So the truck got fixed up. You know, typical 22, 20, whatever, however old he was when he got that job. 20, I guess, 21. Mm -hmm. Uh, All the dents got fixed. It got flat black black windows. Got 22. Murdered out. Got murdered out. (laughs) Murdered out. That thing got murdered out. out. I don't know if we murdered things out anywhere else in the country, but here in Memphis, (laughs) you're going to get murdered and we're going to murder your truck out. Yep. (laughs) So he's got 22s on it. And so after we lost him, you know, every now and then I'd get this thing out and drive it. It's got two hundred something thousand miles. It's it's been in a pond. It's done more burnouts than than anybody could ever Back up imagine. To the pond story. <laughs> I feel like you were gonna gloss right past yeah. that. Like well, you didn't just say the truck went in water. Right. right. <laughs> so that's a story that we never fully got all the context. Oh, the detail. So I'm in bed. It's got to be three or four o'clock in the morning, and I feel someone grab my big toe. <laughs> So, you know, you immediately wake up, somebody grabs yeah, your big toe. Right. right. And so I kind of pop up, not like violently, but I kind of pop up. Yeah. With and some it's, concern. Yes. And it's Dalton, and he's, and he's giving me the, the fingers. So, in other words, he's <laughs> like, don't, want mom don't, don't wake mom up. Don't wake mama. But. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I ease out of bed, and she's a light sleeper. So she actually knew what was going on. She just didn't get up. Right. <laughs> So I eased into the living room, shut the bedroom door, instant tears out of him. Yeah. I run the truck off in a pond. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, okay, where's it at? Well, at the time, the race shop was it's still in Munford, and he's like, I had it towed to the race shop. Okay. I didn't ask anything. You know, it's the proper dad thing to do. When you reach a certain point with your, your kids, you know, you can you kind of become that, like, buddy thing you're right mm-hmm. i'm like i'll find out this story later right and about how old when is your he mom isn't asleep in the next room exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. he's probably 16 17 okay somewhere in that so that, he's just yeah oh yeah uh-huh. starting to feel his oats uh-huh. you know and i'm 
I'm not like calling him at, at midnight. Where are you at? When you're getting home, you know, he's to the age where I'm. Um, right. But to, to his, his credit, at 16, 17, he handled his business. He had it towed to the shop. Had it towed to the shop. He made some phone calls. I mean, a little well, bit of respect on that level. Well, one of his there. buddies' dad owns a tow truck company. Who's probably with him. Probably was. <laughs> he, he was at the party for sure. Yeah, you're going uh, to sure. call your dad. We're going to fix this. Yeah. Right. So I just tell Dalton, like, just go to bed. I got it. So I get up. Of course, I told Don, I'm like, I have no idea. You know, we run the truck off in a pond. But I, I, I get dressed and I go to the race shop. And I could tell it, it was in there. I don't, I'm not good at angles. But it's in there where like the whole engine and water up until about the middle of the front seat. Not the Ooh. back seat. But, it, you know, so yeah. it, 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 it was in there. It was, it in was there. down there. It yeah. was down there. Yeah. So I just do. Got the, the dashboard. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, everything and all the important stuff. Yeah, yeah. All the important, yeah. Stuff. Yeah. The important yeah. end of the vehicle. The engine and the dashboard. Yeah. The ECU so is right. gone. Yeah. It's yeah. a flood vehicle at this yeah. point. Exactly. So, yeah. so I pull the plugs out, you know, drain the oil out of it, spun it over. I, you know, I know how to fix scraps, whatever. So bloat it out best I could, put the plugs right back in it, start it up. You're crank, good. Crank right back up. <laughs> yep. Drove it home. You know, took the air filter out wow. up, drove it home. Yeah. So there's tons of stories with this Dentley. So anyway, when it's here and it's got, you know, a couple hundred thousand miles and it's got a few problems because it's been underwater, you know, <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I got to do something. And so I talked, I was talking to Buggy Johnson. He worked, worked on the top fuel car forever. Been at comp cams forever. Yeah, I know Buggy. And so Buggy lived literally right over here. He's also a Drummond's boy. I said, man, I think. God, I can't believe I'm fixing to say this, but I said maybe I should just stick a LS in this thing and have oh, something man. fun to drive. Yeah, you he know? said the worst things for this guy. Right <laughs> yeah. He hates yeah. LS. Form. Well, I'm 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 not that guy either. I'm yeah. a Mopar guy, right? You know, and I'm like maybe that's what I should do. And Buggy's like, you know what? I I've, I've done some work for a Memphis doctor. He was into the hot rod thing for a while, and I've got a brand new crate engine sitting in my garage. Been there two or three years. This guy's never done anything with it. I'm like, well, that belongs to him, and I can't spend that kind of money, you know. Long story short, I bought it for almost nothing from the doctor. He was kind of over the, you know. The he, deal. He, yeah, yeah, he, he was, lost yeah, interest. Lost in interest. Yeah. So now I've got a 6.1 crate motor that's never been in anything that had already been sent to Arrington and come back as a 426 Hemi. Oh, wow. wow. So I'm like, this is cool. You know, and just fell in your lap. Yeah, it fell yeah. in my lap. You know, and I, so Freiberger connects me to Mike Copeland. So the next thing you know, the cylinder heads got sent to him, got CNC ported, got them back, and I'm gonna put a pro charger on there. You can buy a kit. I mean, yeah, I got welders and stuff here, whatever, but I don't have tubing benders. I don't have notch. You know, this is right. my home shop. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I can put a pro charger on this thing. It'll be fun to drive. You know, four four twenty six Hemi right. and a four door Dodge truck. It'll be cool. So I stopped by the track in Memphis on my way to the airport one day. I don't even know where I was going. Doesn't matter. But I knew Jeff Lutz was there test testing radials. Uh -huh. They were having a small tire race that weekend. So I don't know Jeff other than, hey, how you doing kind of thing. Like, we don't have each other's phone number. I swing by there, and I'm watching a couple cars. I see Jeff make a run. So when he comes back, I go by over there. Like, hey, man, you know. He's like, sit down. He was by himself. Actually, I think Jeffrey was with him, his kid. And so we sat down in the lawn chairs, typical racetrack stuff, you know. And, and I'm telling him I'm having trouble finding a Pro Charger for a 2004 model. They had them for the newer models. And I said, yeah, I'm trying to figure out this bracket thing. I don't know nothing about these new model Hemis. And, and he just says, you should put turbos on it. Mm. I'm like, nah, I want to just bolt something on there. He's like. You should put turbos on it. I'm like, I know maybe, but I'm doing this at home, you know, I'd blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I'll put them on there for you. And I'm like, I do the money thing. Yeah. You know, I'm like, uh -huh. I'm sure you would. You know, <laughs> Jeff right. is not just a street outlaw star. He's right. a chassis builder. Right. A well-known right. yeah. one. Yeah, he's got a yeah, yeah. big shop. Yeah. So, and I'm like, no, man, I, I don't want to spend that kind of money. It's just it's something I want to drive once in a while, you know, just when I'm thinking about Dalton, whatever, you know, and he's like, it needs turbos. I'm like, I told you, you know, and I'm like, I'm doing this at home. And he's like, you don't understand what I'm saying here. I said, 
no, what are you saying here? He's like, I'm coming to your house. And we're going to put turbos on. And we're going to put turbos on. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I don't even know if I want to buy turbos. And he's like, you just aren't listening to me. We're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody say anything about money? Right. I'm like, no. And I said, but I don't, you know, I don't work that way. You know, I don't, I want to pay for what I do. You know, I don't want to feel like I owe you. And he's like, it's a special project. He knew, he knew what that was. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. like, it's a special project. That's awesome. And so he's like, here's my phone number and we're going to make this happen. And you'll be getting a call from Precision Turbo. Okay. <laughs> I go off to a race. A couple of weeks go by, whatever. And I'm like, Ah, Jeff Lutz is full of crap, <laughs> you know. And I'm, I'm actually at the, yeah. at the racetrack in Vegas, and I get a phone call. It's Precision Turbo. Yeah. Wow. What are you? What are your plans? Blah blah blah. What are you know? I'm like, I don't know. You know, it's, this is something Jeff Lutz has got on his brain, not me. <laughs> you know. So. I wouldn't even know what size, you know. Like, I, yeah, I didn't. I, I, don't know. I didn't. Yeah, but, I didn't know. I don't know. Just, I don't, I'm talking about I don't yeah. know about Gen 3 Hemis. I know even less about turbos. Yeah. Ask you me about a blower. I can tell you something about that. Right. You don't uh, You don't know the do- – I only ask because I know a doctor who is big Dodge and he has a lot of projects. You don't know the doctor. I name. don't. Buggy would know. If it's Dr. Bean, I know what project that was for. I don't. He's I don't. got a few. He's had a few. Uh, he's got a Challenger. He was retro, uh, Risto Modern. I think that might have been the motor that was. I know Buggy his. put a Pro Charger on a Challenger for him, but I think it was a new model Challenger. No, that's it. I'll be dang. That's that's Doctor Bean. I'll be dang. That's awesome. Well, He'd I, be one to have on the show too. He's yeah. he's got a lot of cars. okay. Yeah. Wow. So it's anyway, small, small, yeah. Small so world, how man. far away now is the is <laughs> is is Dentley? So. Because it's been there three years. Yeah, I was gonna say it's been, it's been there been three a while. years. So the two turbos show up from Precision. With Jeff Lutz's name on them. My address, Jeff Lutz's name. So I'm assuming he bought them out of... I have no idea. They might have gave them to him. I don't know. They had no reason to give them to me. I'm not... I'm a top fuel guy. I'm not a turbo guy. Right. You still got a good name, though. So then then it turned into... All right. I, I put the motor in here. Boys at comp, you know, they come up with right cam. Then they come up with adjustable rockers which means it got a solid lift cam in it you know it's getting it's, it's starting it's, to get spi- the project's starting to spiral up yes yeah. i've got a uh, 4080e I, I put in it it's talking to, to jeff and on and on and on and precision turbos like this thing's gonna make over a thousand you know at the wow. tire you know and all right 4080s out so i took that back to dci now it's got a turbo 400 this is all while it's here and then Fast forward a little bit, I decided it's got to have a roll cage. So right, yeah. With a 1,000 horsepower yeah. and drag slicks. Yeah. So it, it made its way to, to Jeff's shop, and from there it's completely 100% out of control. It now has uh, four-link rear suspension. It's got 16 <laughs> by 16 weld Delta 1s on the back of it. It's got a funny car <laughs> cage in it. But it is going to have carpet. Air condition, power steering, power windows. You'll be able to drive it to the track. Absolutely. Yes. So wow. think drag week. Kind I was going to say you're looking at a yeah, drag week. It's a drag cars, week. Car. You, yeah. And, you know, people, which we, I kept this thing hidden for three years. Yeah. Like I didn't talk about it. It's right. like it was a personal thing between my family and, and it became personal to, to the Lutz family as well. And so this year at SEMA, I was at a Big Parts Plus event where they bring in all their vendors and what have you. And the vice president of CRC, the brake clean company, he's like, man, I, my son and I love Street Outlaws. I know you're buddies with Lutz. And I'm like, man, he's such a good dude. Like me and him have really become good buddies. He's a family man, you know, all these things, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, so what about this truck project you're working on and it's not been on the internet <laughs> at all, right, at all. Right. but but he knows me enough i yeah. mean they, they've sponsored the car yeah. for over 12 years so i mean and he's like what's happening with that thing and i'm like ah you know it's a buddy deal lutz is filming non-stop you know he has customers and he's like well what's the hold up and i'm like it's a buddy deal i can't i'm not, i can't put a timeline nothing and yeah, it's just I'm gonna not, happen i'm not putting a timeline on it yeah and he's like, well, it would be really cool if we had that truck at our booth here at SEMA. I'm oh, like, gosh. yeah, no kidding. Yeah. 
And he's like, what do we got to do to make that happen? I'm like, Money. <laughs> the I money the, thing came I up did, again. Yeah, the money thing come back up again. <laughs> got to get rid of the buddy part of yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I said, it's, I said, I, I'm assuming, you know, if, if I paid like a normal customer, you know, I'm Either like, I don't know, on. you know. So I called Jeff and I'm like, this is what's happening. He's like, man, he's like, it, you know, it obviously would make a difference because his son is an artist unbelievable like while jeff's off filming jeffrey's at the shop making stuff happen right he's learned from from his dad very well and so i told him i'm like all right whatever crc's wanting to do let's let's move forward so we end up doing a zoom call and that truck will be at sema this year wow yeah. heck yeah, yeah. Super cool yeah. Thank very, you, CRC. Cool. Yeah, right. right. I didn't yeah. stage products, but there's products. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. look, it happens yeah. to be right there. Yeah. Yeah. I, play, I place the cameras. I know what I do. <laughs> <laughs> but if you watch my YouTube channel, you will notice there that there's a little CRC, and it's not a product place. It's just like a little 10, 15 second at the start of my videos at the end, and that wasn't even really what they wanted. Yeah. You know, it, they knew it was a special project and they think it would be cool to, to accelerate getting it done. And that's awesome. And uh, showcase it. It's, yeah. It's show, it, so, yep. very, very so it'll be cool. at CRC this year in their booth. In their yeah. booth. Yeah. Are they going to call it Dentley? It is oh, Dentley. It's never going to oh, be yeah. changed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is Dentley. Dentley 100%. It's Dentley. <laughs> is there a dent on it at all anymore? <laughs> Not any. Eh, maybe, but out of posterity, I promise you, you put one dent oh, in I it. I promise you, it's got plenty of Bondo in it. So it, <laughs> it, was, it might be Bondi. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It does have a scratch down one side. Oh, yeah. Flat black is horrible. If you touch anything with oh, flat black. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah you can't eat pizza and touch it. It'll be yeah. Gross. Yeah. But yeah. the good part about it is you just spray right back over. Yeah, and exactly. Go. Yeah. Exactly. But it's it's going to be different. Like, say, twin turbo, 426 Hemi deal, Gen 3. Uh, Jeffrey, I'll show you. Of course, it's going to be hard to show on this, but I can it's it's out there now you know we yeah. did a, we did a couple youtubes on it but it's really moving fast now we're putting the it'll have four seats back in it uh we're yeah. putting oh crap bars in the back to hold on to uh, excellent oh that'd be what fun. uh yeah. what computer management you running it's a fast system comp yeah. cams comp cams. yeah Look yep. that man! I'm jealous. That's gonna a thousand horsepower pickup. Yeah, Unbelievable. that'd be cool. Unbelievable. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be that fast because the thing's got a way. 5,500 pounds or something. Yeah. I mean, it's got to weigh more now than it did when it was stock. Did yeah. you ever see the video? Oh, the roll Probably, cage. Probably, yeah, with the roll yeah. cage. Yeah. And, and if you yeah, put the interior is, back in yeah. it. Stock, it only had like 280 horses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah, exactly. So we're, the power to weight's a little different. <laughs> so did you guys ever see the video with the Ring Brothers put the LS motor in the Winnebago? No. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I so it's a beast. So I've yeah, seen, you're gonna have your hands full. It, it's gonna. I think it's gonna be. Uh, I think it's gonna be awesome. Worried about that transmission. So uh, It'll be more a than anything. tire fryer. It will yeah. be. Yeah. Since, well, that's since okay. we're talking that's... about Dentley and we're talking about the truck, so what about this? Uh, is it called the brakes program? What, yeah, what, what yeah. So, well, the, yeah, What's I was that? gonna, I was gonna say a good transition because <laughs> because Dentley was your was your yep, son was Dalton. Yep. And and so, um, project that I I really admire you for is is a brakes program that, that you do and um i'll let you explain the story because because who it's a long story i know <laughs> well, we got time but, but who you're doing it with yep is makes it just that much more epic and, and the whole the whole yep. thing behind so i don't remember again back to them years and dates and stuff right. i'm horrible so doug herbert is a former top fuel driver really good racer Sponsored by Snap On, he didn't have to pay those monthly or the weekly <laughs> deals. Yes, yeah. lucky. he got his pocket knife. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> he lost one. He didn't matter. He got yeah, one he next got week. One. Yeah. So well, he lost, and he was a big dude. He dude. is. Like, he <laughs> is a monster. He's a monster. He's a big guy. So, Doug lost two sons in one crash. Wow. Uh, one his son was driving too fast, uh, probably less than a mile from his house. Hit a car head on, mm -hmm. killed them both. Uh, both teenagers, you know, and so... 2008? I think that's right. Yeah. I wanted to say eight. Yeah. I wanted to say somewhere in there. So Doug decided, you know, like, man, you know, it's obviously horrible, un unbelievable thing that he went through there. And he's like, I want to do something with John and James's friends so that 
maybe they will, you know, he's like, I, I don't know what I want to do, but I want to do something. So maybe that won't happen to, to his, their friends. Well, it turned into what's called the Breaks Program, which these friends of John and James came up with the name. Be responsible and keep everyone safe. That's what it stands for. Wow. And it was just a local to Charlotte deal for a little while. And now fast forward to 2021, they've taught over 50,000 kids teen safe driving. Uh, oh, okay. It's free. It doesn't cost anything to go. And wow. it's nationwide now. But the cool part is, though, is that the parents are required to go 100%, as well, right? 100%. One so, parent. One, right. At least one parent. At least one parent. And and the the parents are learning. Well, here's what, what they're taught. And I do not have anything to do with teaching. I've not taken the classes that's required. I mean, they use guys like movie stunt drivers. Uh, they've got guys that teach the president's limo drivers, wow. you know, secret yeah. service guys. Yeah. So the, it, it's not road race yeah, guys. This isn't, this isn't, <clears throat> uh, your normal driver's oh, license. Oh, it's far from stuff, driver ed. They're putting kids through real world, situ- real world yep. situations yes. where they have to make a decision. Yep. Right now. Uh, quickly and, and, yep. and in all a controlled kind of environment. So, yeah. 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 Exactly. They, exactly. they put exactly. your, you know, they put the kids in a bad situation in a controlled environment and make them make that decision. And of then what go to back do. and correct what they need to correct. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a yep. program. That's good. Yeah. So they've, like I said, they've taught over 50,000 kids nationwide to continue. It's, it's growing and it is an absolute amazing program. So to where I became involved with it is a bit of a story. So Doug Herbert raced top fuel. I raced top fuel. He was the king of the IHRA series. I become the guy over there. And at some point, he and I had a massive staging battle on live television. I didn't want to stage. He didn't want to stage. And it ended up with him telling me things about my mama that I'd never heard before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And think Mutt and Jeff. Yeah. yeah. Clay. It's, yeah. Herbert, yeah. he he's a he's a huge man. He's what six? six? He's got to be six five at least. Yeah, you know he's big. And I'm he's, five seven. You know yeah. whatever. Yeah. And anyway, so after the John and James had their crash, you know he this program come about a year or so later, and so even though we definitely did not like each other like at all, right? Butted heads, you know, on the racetrack sort of thing. You know, I I reached out like, man, whatever I can do, you know, whatever, anything I can do. So we knew and he knew especially because anything that's a program like that is about fundraising. It become a 501c3 deal, you know, and that's he actually quit racing and this is all he does. So uh, and before people think anything about that, you can look them up like their percentage of of charitable charitable side is like. Way near, high. way high. Yeah, it's way up there. Anyway, so we knew that me and him doing something together would help at least get some attention because everybody on forever it was the highlight of the start of every NHRA race was me and him shoving, <laughs> right? Or whatever pushing and shoving like a you know yeah. like WWE or yeah. whatever, yeah. <laughs> or the Coliseum on Monday night. <laughs> uh, so I I tried to help you know just in fundraising and it, and it wasn't me writing a check because I. I I don't have that kind of money, but we did all we could to help him with fundraising. Well, fast forward a few more years, and and I lose a child in a crash. So the racing community is an amazing thing. So every year in Charlotte, they do a fundraiser kind of around the NHRA race. They they have this really nice get-together and an auction, you know, and all this kind of stuff. So pro stock racer Alan Johnson... Mm -hmm paid for there to be a brakes class here in memphis in dalton's memory which was wow. a- amazing very emotional like you know total come apart in front of all your peers you know <laughs> yeah, right. sort of thing and <clears throat> so i had never actually went to a brakes class in person i had helped raise money we did stuff for that and so the first thing that i find out as a host i'm now hosting a brakes class right and th- that means you've got to fill that class. You've got so it's four, four classes, two two on Saturday, two on Sunday. They're about four hours long a piece. 
And I think the first year we did it, it was, I don't know, 88 kids or something is what we were trying to do. It's brand new to the Memphis area. So I spent weeks and weeks, you know, going to schools and this and that. Campaigning, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And uh, actually Doug flew in and we spoke to 2,000 kids in one day. Wow. We, the Munford High School, Brighton High School, and Covington, they all, again, it's kind of the hometown boy thing. You know, I was able to call like, hey, can we do this? And they got all the kids in the gym, you know. Right. And uh, we did okay the first year. I mean, it ended up full, but not like over full. And I think we're five years in now. Alan Johnson has paid for the class to be here every year. Pretty wow. amazing. Wow. Uh, it's not cheap, but <clears throat> anyway, the last couple of years, I haven't had to do anything. Wow. And Just... there's people coming to the class. That didn't even sign up. They just manifest there? Or what? You have to sign up yeah. because Brakes provides the car. Oh, you do, All you have to do is come. Bring a parent okay. and, and the kid. Wow. Kia actually is the sponsor of the cars. Kia brings brand new cars. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so they, uh, they now have a waiting list, which is awesome. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and it, we're up to 188 kids now on, uh, two, in two days. Wow. wow. So it's just been pretty amazing. The classes are incredible. Again, I had never attended one in person until the first one. And, you know, it was hard. I ain't going to lie to you. Like, I had to get up and speak to the kids. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes that, that 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 little dude gets on me, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's so rewarding at the same time uh, to see a kid – and the majority of them don't want to be there. And I would have been that kid, too. Same. You know, parents like, ah, you got to go to school. I'm like, oh, I don't want to go to school. It's a driving school. That's be fun. They're like, I already know how to drive. Right. I know everything. I'm, right. 16, yeah, I'm 16 years old. You can't tell me yeah. nothing. You can't yeah. tell me nothing. So, the, you know, the kids will show up, especially the morning classes, because it starts at 8. Yeah, they don't yeah. want to be Saturday away. morning, you don't want right. to be, you know. Trying to, trying to grow in my sleep. What are you yeah, talking about? Yeah, Exactly. And they'll be so aggravated and so mad, and you can spot them, you know, like when I'm up there talking or whatever. And I'll just like, man, hands in the pockets, looking oh, off. Yeah. <laughs> and then by the end of the day, they're like, man, this was freaking fun. This was cool, you right. know, and, and it is. You know, they end up having a good time, but, but they, you know, they, they do slalom course. They, the favorite of all of them is they do skid control. So they put everybody, remember big wheels? Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, the kids toy, yeah, the big wheel, we absolutely. all had to. Popping, popping tires, plastic, yeah. that crackling sound. So they put plastic tires on the rear of these Kias. And let you slide. What? Yeah. They don't want you to slide, they but you end up sliding. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you learn you learn car how control. To how to turn into yeah. How to steer. turn. You know, and there's... It's like a drift bike. Yeah. Or, or the, you know, the little, little, big little drift big bikes. Wheel. Yeah, yeah exactly. You're just saying big wheel. Oh, yeah. yeah, big wheel yeah. sound. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome know, back. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm yeah. sorry. I, well, yeah. I thought he was saying it was, it was on the Kia. Yeah. It was yeah. on the car. Yeah, yeah they, they put okay, it on the car. Just, like, yeah, like drift trikes. It, this is a cool yeah. deal. You know, they're pretty neat. Kind of sidetracked there, but yeah. they let the air out of the tire and you can force it over it and air the tire back up and it's just this plastic deal. Yeah. You know? So it's pretty amazing. I mean, they've got another... Another one of the the courses during the day is they got a chalk lines painted. I don't know how long they are. Doesn't matter. And at the end, it it lies open, and it there's three lanes with red lights and green lights above them. So they make the kids accelerate as fast as the car will go, and when it gets to the opening of that Y, there'll only be one green light. So they got to make a decision which one to go to, where to go to. Oh, so let's wow. and what that is is let's say you're driving down the interstate and a ladder falls out of the back of the truck. Crash avoidance. Where am I going to go? Yeah. Right. Crash avoidance, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. But real life, like I got to make a decision right now and I'm I'm going pretty fast. Right. You know and but and back control to control it. Yes. Yeah. And back to the parent thing. And I'm not the one saying this. They got these these for real. Like say road race guys, you name it. They got all these these legit car guys, car control guys. Not that a top field car is not car, but anyway. Right, they uh, they'll tell the tell everybody, you know, and the parents are there. How many parents think your kid's a terrible driver? Everybody. Most of the parents there raise their hand. Yeah, and they'll say, "Do you know why?" And they're like, "No, we don't know why. Why? It's because you can't drive." <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. right. They learn they it from learn you. From they learn it from watching you, you mama. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's you, truth. You, you mm. do, you yeah. know. 
And I, I'm glad, I, man, I, I'm, I'm eating up with that one. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the truth, man. That's they, true. they learn who they're around all the time. You know, it's like you, 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 your yeah. mom always told you, you're hanging around with the wrong crowd. Right? Yeah. You are, a, what is it? You're a victim of your surroundings or yeah, whatever it is, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's for sure. The, the wow. one thing that I really, really learned, and it's a small thing, but I can't help it. Once they, I learned it, it breaks. Everybody does it wrong, is how you adjust your mirrors on your car. Every one of us adjust our mirror where we can see the back quarter panel just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just a hair. Just a hair. It's wrong. Really? They, they go further they, out than that. Yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be further than that. You know where the back corner of your car is, just in your mind. You know Spare, where it's at. Yeah, spatial recognition. And so, we do this with the parents, or they do. I actually have helped a couple times. They'll they'll have somebody stand way over here, and adjust the mirrors until you can see that person, and they can walk. And you can go from this this mirror to your rear view mirror to that mirror and never Seamless. lose them. Yeah. You never lose them. So you have no blind spot. You have no blind spot. Yeah. What? But if you're seeing the cor- the quarter panel, Man. if you're seeing the quarter panel, you do have a little blind spot when yeah. they walk across. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. When there's someone's yeah. first merging. Or you got oh, the man, guy That's hang- information. Yeah, today. exactly. That's awesome. I mean, all this cool Half stuff. Your cars I'll, don't have I'll mirrors t- on them. I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you how you learn that, too, is if. Uh, you drive one of the new type of cars that, like the, the new Camaro, the new Camaro. Um, my wife's 07 Civic Si. The, anything with those big blind spots in the C pillar. Now, like yeah. y- if you don't have those things adjusted right, man, there will be so many times yeah. where you'll oh, go yeah. you'll go to merge and all of a sudden, like, oh god, there's a car there. Yeah, Lamborghini yeah. Huracan. Oh yeah, I wouldn't know <laughs> about that. <laughs> <laughs> No 300 miles an hour. Never drove a Lambo. <laughs> Put me on both those. Yeah. Uh, you, don't, you don't want one, trust me. I, you yeah. know I don't. I don't have one, but uh, I have driven, driven one. one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Blind spots out this world. That's for sure. I'm yeah. willing to try it. I drove it. Yeah. <laughs> so how many times a year do they do that? Uh, in Memphis, in just Memphis. once a year. Once just a year. Just once a year, and it's in October. Uh, yeah. Which we have to find a spot. We may have to find a spot. It takes a pretty good sized parking lot. Yeah. So, so it's just done in a parking lot? Done in a parking lot. Needs nothing special. They how, bring how everything. How big of a parking lot do you need? Uh, Mike's won't get it. <laughs> yeah. I, I know a spot, yeah. though. No, I do, too. Yeah. Essentially, well, the infield of the circle track over over the raceway. Yeah. But I'm it doesn't, it don't, it can have some poles, but it don't need to be full of them. Probably yeah. not. <laughs> they don't yeah. need real crash avoidance. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I mean, they yeah. do it all yeah. the time in parking lots. Like they, you know, other cities, they use, you know, football stadium parking lots. Yeah. And Liberty, Tiger Lane, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. maybe Tiger Lane. Maybe. Tiger Lane would be yeah. a good one. Well, yeah. we do autocross at, at Liberty Bowl. Yeah. 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 I mean, here's a crazy one. And I can't think of the name of the stadium, but believe it or not, I mean, Memphis has been amazing. They've never asked for anything. They've done nothing but – doesn't matter who the manager management was at the time, but we've done it, I think, five years now. You know, But when Brakes goes on the West Coast and they use a football field or whatever, they have to pay for it. Wow. Mm-hmm. I'm like, are you kidding me? That doesn't surprise me. California. Yeah. I didn't say California. <laughs> I said West Coast. Oh, no. He's I in said California. He, he, but, it is, but it is a football stadium yeah. in California. California. It just happens to be in California. California. Yeah. Happens but the plastic ball, yeah, the yeah. plastic tires actually come from because of California too. Water shortage. They used to just water the parking lot to slide to teach them, you know, oh, right. yeah. car control yeah, right. in, the, in the wet. In the wet, yeah. And California wouldn't now, let them use water, <laughs> so they, they had, had to pay to, for the water. So they had to, you had to pay PCD. for the water. Yeah. Wow. Oh yeah, no, yeah. you did. California. But <laughs> believe it or not, <laughs> believe it or not, they charge you for water here. You just, they just, everyone's so lazy here, they don't charge. No, no. <laughs> look, in right Memphis, yeah. if you were going to do something for an event like that, oh, they'd they bring you the would the just water go, truck out for hey, you. Hey, can you bring the fire department out here to open yeah. a hydrant? They would just yeah. do it for you. Yeah. It would be no questions asked. <laughs> That's another thing, too, Mr. Fireman. You know a guy. Yeah. I know a guy. <laughs> yeah. Fire department comes out and, and demonstrates extrication. Oh, yeah. They, they come yeah. out to the brakes classes, which oh, is pretty cool. cool. The highway patrol yeah. comes out. Has, it's, has you've organized that with the city before? Yeah. yeah. Hey, well, Javier, you've got a jaws of life. You have access well, to it. Yeah. I, yeah. I can we play with that one day? <laughs> <laughs> Bring that over? I'm on camera. I can. No. <laughs> <laughs> if can I can we or a can't, car with that? <laughs> we're definitely not going to be able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Chief. <laughs> 
The stone inventory that day. Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. But that that school's amazing. It really, really is. Yeah, it's and epic. Hopefully, we don't have to find a parking lot, but I may be bugging y'all like we need a parking lot. Yeah, you know? we we'll need find you a parking something. lot. Yeah. We can get you a parking yeah. lot, no doubt. Not a problem. Well, yeah, and you won't have to pay for it. Right, right, right. <laughs> you, uh, It'll be amazing if we plan it out and it's in the in my territory. I can hook up the extrication. Awesome, I'll awesome, get awesome, with the awesome. On that mm. PR, they love yeah. it. It'd be good. It's yeah, good they, for everybody. They come out every year, and like I say, it's pretty cool. You know, local junkyards bring a car out. And yep. they, they put a dummy in there and cut the roof off of it. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. cut we the need, roof we off need the, the training. dummy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they try to avoid that. <laughs> yeah. They decapitate the dummy. Yeah. Yeah. We, we cut roofs off commonly. We just oh, yeah, they do. we do yeah. it for style. El Camino. So that's right. Oh, El Camino. Yeah. So let, let's let's chat about uh, I guess some of our stuff. What you what you got going on, Mike? How is your uh, you're doing an El Camino now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing. A, I found the finish of the Camaro. That's okay, gone. it's gone. That's okay, epic. full chassis Camaro. Um, a custom Camaro. It's it's slammed. It's awesome. <clears throat> and now uh, we brought in an El Camino, and we were gonna make it a dedicated bike hauler. Um, that idea kind of fizzled out. So then we decided, you know what? We're just gonna uh, we're gonna turn it into a station wagon. So I cut the roof off of it yesterday, and I started. Um, welding all the structure back in today. I got the bulk of the structure welded in today, so uh, I'm getting close to uh, to starting the skinning process of it. That's going to be one of a kind. I don't think I've ever seen that done. Uh, not that I know of. I mean, it's possible that it's been done, but uh, I'm not doing it with factory metal. Um, so at the end of the day, it will New be one of one. Oh, okay. It, it'll be one of one. I'm not using, you know, initially when we first started talking about it, I was like looking at it, you know, and El Caminos are actually built on station wagon platforms. Okay. Like they, you. the, the smugglers box and El Caminos and Rancheros, that is the floorboards for the back passengers. They, they are built on station wagon platforms. What was that called again? Um, smugglers box. Smugglers box. box. Yeah. yeah, never heard of that one. El I'm not El familiar. That's El, a space El Camino. Box. What did I just walk back into? Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm <laughs> starting what? to find my what? roots all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, it's called yeah. Smugglers Box. I didn't know that's why they called it. That. Wait, yeah. this, okay. this Smugglers Box is where? It's, it's behind the. It's behind the seats. There's there's a compartment underneath the bed. Um, where the, the, the Mexicans on every El Camino. <laughs> That's I have no idea, really. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully, I'm not letting yeah. law enforcement in on where the. Dope I mean, I just, I'm pretty stuff. sure they know. I just <laughs> thought it was. I just thought <laughs> like, it was a regular bed. No, no, no. They, if you pull, you've never noticed that it's always a split bench in an El Camino or a Ranchero. It's that way for a reason, um, because you lean the seat forward, and there's an entire compartment back there. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. Three hundred and fifty Z has one. Yeah, of those. so they are built off. I'm of, not a big fan of El Caminos. Right. I will say that. Right. So I never but really pay attention. They are. Uh, wow. They are built hey, on man. a station wagon platform. Um, if you look in the bed, there is a bolt-on plate at the very front of the bed. And what they did is they just cut out basically a bed floor section, and they made it a bolt-on plate. He's going to get the cords. He's, He's going to get them. The He's going to get them. <laughs> Your dogs are awesome, by the way. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> I love them. But uh, <clears throat> so there's a bolt-on plate at the very beginning of that bed. So rather than seal up the whole bed, all they did is where the back seat was, um, they just made a bolt-on plate, and they just zip-screwed it down to the bottom. Um, you pull that plate up, and that's where the back seats were, um, <laughs> right there. Um, and then, of course, the rest of the bed floor is actually the back of the station wagon. So... Um, I knew no that, idea. you know, so when we were talking about stuff and we were spitballing ideas, I was like, man, you know, it's hard to find two-door wagons. They're they're like unicorns. You can find a four-door all day, but that wouldn't be Which cool. Which I think, I think they're cool, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, four-door is super awesome. They really are. Done right. But, uh, right, done right. Um, so we just decided, you know what? What do you think about making it a station wagon? And, and Plumber Mike, you know, surprisingly... Um, because I was really thinking that I was throwing that idea out there for him to, you know, pull the whole New York thing and be like, get out of here, you know, and all that. <laughs> and he was like, dude, I've always wanted a station wagon. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah. So I sent him this, this, this concept idea, and he was like, absolutely, let's do it. I'm like, all right, so. So is it going to be a panel? Like no windows no, on the side? No, it'll it'll have windows on the Wrap side. Right? And, and it's, uh, it's going to be pretty window heavy, so my – my idea is is I want to make the sheet metal as trim as possible for the pillars. Um, I want it to almost 
look like a fishbowl. Kind of like, like a, a pacer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like a like, pacer. Yeah, yeah. Very pacer-esque. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, so, so you know, I, I, I did a rendering, and I sent him the rendering, and he loved it. And um, he showed up at the shop, and he was like, he had a buddy with him, and he was like, you know, what do you think? And, you know, that guy's like, of course, he's not a car guy, so he's like, I don't know. It's your money, Whatever bro. you want. <laughs> so he said the magic words. He said, you know what, Mike? I love everything you do. So do whatever you want. Just make it cool. And I was like, you have just said the magic words. <laughs> yes. Whatever I want. Who whatever told want. you my secret unlock code? <laughs> <You're right. laughs> right. but, so, but wait, uh, did he say money's no object? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, he didn't say that. And normally, anytime somebody says that, I throw them out immediately because that's a lie. <laughs> right. The last right. thing that he probably, is a lie. I think the last thing Plumber Mike probably said was uh, finally somewhere I could put my surfboards. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Because he's yeah. a big Brooklyn surfer. Yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. That's right. He's a Brooklyn surfer. So, uh, so he, he left. He had to go to work. And uh, and the moment he walked out of the door and got in his truck, I was like, Justin, <laughs> grab, grab the saws off. <laughs> you got to cut this right roof now. off before he changes his mind. <laughs> oh, we're in it now. <laughs> Came right back. He's like, oh, he already did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he showed back up like two hours later and the roof is in the floor. Um, but initially, my idea was is to take the factory back window and that day. whole surround and make that the very back. So yeah. flip it over so it's curved. Ish, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, now it's kind of transcended. I am going to use the factory back El Camino glass. Yeah. Um, but, you know, of course, i got to make that open or whatever. But I'm not going to use any of the factory sheet metal. Okay, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> what? You, that one have a bone in it? <laughs> wow. That one had a bone in it. That's cool. But, uh, yeah, yeah, so that's what we're doing. We're uh, we're We're... It's El Camino time. Um, you know, I think we're going to call it uh, a Mike Camino, but not for me, for Plumber Mike. Plumber Mike. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a Mike Camino. <laughs> Mike Camino. I like that. Yeah, the pipe wagon. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that. I think the pipe wagon would be the right way to go. <laughs> that, that's better. <laughs> we might, hey, we might have to start a poll. Yeah, yeah. 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 A poll I, I like what Mike should wagon. name his <laughs> El Camino. So, Have you anyways. ever seen my pipe wagon? <laughs> <laughs> Look at all my surfboards. I, I think Look at my tools. Like Look at all my tools. <laughs> I keep my tools. I keep in the my back biggest of the tools wagon. in my pipe wagon. <laughs> but yeah, so that's 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 what we're working on. That's, that's cool. Awesome. It is. Stuff. That is it really is. cool. What are you two doing? I am, uh, man. I'm, I'm sure you two are. You got to be about moving in, aren't you? We're well, getting close, there. Close. Oh. Real close. We were started. Yeah. So y'all gonna live together? <laughs> no, no, ish, <laughs> ish. Yeah. So, so we we have a building. We bought. They'll a, fight um, like the odd a, one of the Quanza huts over on Chelsea. Oh, cool. Uh, and and uh, yeah, we've got our little side hustles, and uh, we have gone through this and cleaned it out and uh, and rewired it. And what do you got there? That's super. Is that your is that your parents' grocery? Yeah. Uh, that is super. Do you cool. own it? Oh, That's no cool. kidding. Do you it's, own it? It's no longer there. It's, it's no it's, longer it's there. Well, the, neither is the picture. It went black. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> You're right. Oh, do you, you don't have the sign, do you? Do you still have the sign? God, I wish I did. Oh, do you know man, that's, that's, that's Do you know that's how I found out who you were? I was actually doing a cycling tour through. Of course I used you to, were. Yeah, I should have. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do a lot of road cycling and stuff. It was 1970. Was, yeah. Things were crazy. Yeah. American Flyer had just come out. I was no, pedaling. But uh, so so... Uh, it was a hundred mile bicycle tour out around this area or whatever because the the uh, uh, Mississippi Met, River yeah Trail. Mississippi River trails over here and um and I had to I had to get a candy bar or something like I had to have sugar or something and I stopped at it, the grocery B&M store. grocery yep and I had no idea I walked in there and there's like all these racing all these racing t-shirts and looks stuff like everywhere here. like Clay Milliken t-shirts yeah like these and I was like fans. I was like Wow, what's what's going on here? And I'm like, it's like, you know, I think at that time it was probably three time IHRA champion or right, something, right. you know. And I was like, wow, this is this is pretty crazy. I'm like, we got these we guys got are guy, these guys yeah. are fans. I'm like, we have a legitimate <laughs> top fuel guy that lives in town or whatever. And I was like, uh, so you know, who's yeah. who's this? And, and I think uh, it was my mom. It was your mom. You're, you're yeah. pretty good yeah, at really. painting a picture, yeah. but but help yeah. me out here. <laughs> You're eating a Mars bar and skin tight. Skin tight with a fanny <laughs> pack. Spandex. With a fanny pack. I yeah. didn't have a fanny pack. You had like a Bikes Plus what color like logo on your chest. Probably Bikes Pink. Plus. Pink. Huh? What color were the spandex? Black. Pink. Black. What? Black. With, oh, okay. with pink <laughs> squares. Black. Check Shut Like up. a checkered. Uh, 
top, a, a winner's checkered flag top. Steve, just because you guys couldn't ride a bike, I don't want to hear it. No. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, that yeah. would have been mama. But yeah, so is your mom. Yeah. yeah. So she's like, oh, that's my son. That's epic. Yeah. I'm like, wow, this is awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty awesome Yeah. that yeah, your mom I'm, is still there at the grocery store working. Oh, yeah. Working every day. Yeah, the Quantas hut hadn't been gone that long either, actually, but the sign's been gone forever. So there was, this is car related. So they sold Amico gas, American back in the day. Yeah. Right. Had the standard sign that was on two oh. two poles, you know, oh. and the, the American yeah. Yeah. gas logo. When they decided to quit selling gas because you make no money on gas. No. no. And right. they had two pumps. That was it. You know, it yeah. wasn't, and you could only use one side of them because they were up yeah. against the store, kind of. So those two pipes from that sign we took down, they made the most awesome two-piece bumper you've ever seen. In the back of my truck. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, I thought he was going to say frame rails for his first dragster. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, 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 way, way too big for that. <laughs> yeah. And heavy. Like, yeah, I don't know, that yeah. stuff's like quarter inch What'd you thick. put it on? Yeah. I had a... Like K5 se- Blazer or something? No, I had a, a 70, what was that thing? 76, 77... GMC long wheelbase with a 454. Oh, that Dig was the that. perfect yeah. split yeah. Cattle, cattle bar. Split, split, split window sunroof in that thing. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey. Oh, custom. High school stuff. <laughs> <laughs> 79. It was a 79. 79? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Well, One of the few GMs I had. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, well Clay, uh, since we're kind of coming to the end of this, is there anything you want to you want to throw at us or anything you want to close with? Y'all haven't even got started. Well, we'll, we'll do, do a part a, two. We'll have to do a part know, two. Right? Yeah, we yeah. hadn't even got going. Yeah, I think um, uh, we've, we've heard that same from the Rodders when we had uh, Marshall and uh, – and uh, Eddie Wilbanks, it's yep. you know they they just kept going. They've they've got a, probably a part two coming. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, Preston, Preston uh, wasn't done either. No, no, yeah. no. <laughs> wasn't even close. <laughs> I talk faster than he does though. I know, right? We yeah. got a lot, we got a lot more covered. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we we got like two stories out of Preston. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> this no. is really cool. I think what you what you guys are doing. I mean, I just did a almost three hour long podcast on ATV motocross. So wow. so Dalton was the 2011 450A motocross national champion. Wow. ATVs is setting one of his oh, championship yeah, winning yeah. quad is sitting yeah. right over there. Wow. And uh, I was like, man, when I finished, I was like, holy crap, that was three hours. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. funny when you're talking about stuff yeah. you enjoy talking about. Sure, yeah. And all of that one wasn't completely fun, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I Some mean, of it slipped I, your interest, I'm sure. Well, I mean, it was well, no, it was more, tough, you know, because it was about Dalton. to talk about. Right? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, about yeah. Dalton. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. about me. You yeah. know, I mean, we, we, I told stories. I don't tell them full of them. But, yeah. you know, so some of it I'm like, man, I don't know if I really want to do this, yeah. you know, but whatever. But it's been, it was amazing. Yeah. And... This has been the same way, you know. Yeah. It's been like fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. holy Thanks crap! So I can't I, believe we're done. It was funny though. You were talking about Preston. He was like, uh, we were like, well, okay, it's you know, <laughs> been about an hour, hour <laughs> and a half. We gotta, you know. We're oh, he kept going need to wrap it up. And he's like, oh yeah, well, let me tell you this one more story. Well, I think the <laughs> yeah. I think the funniest thing about that whole was deal awesome. was uh, the way he started <laughs> off. Like he didn't understand the format. So he just started talking. Just, so, like, instead of we did the intro like we normally do, we all sat down. Nobody said go. He's like, so basically, <laughs> <laughs> this is who I'm about. And uh, I started racing back before I could drive. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, and you could Sean's trying to jump in and be like, we have I. Uh, what? Yeah. If you could just yeah, we okay. Got- this is episode ten. <laughs> Preston, keep talking. We'll pepper it in. I'll, I'll give props to Sean. He did a fantastic yeah. job editing it to where it just looks seamless. Oh, I, yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I thought it was awesome. Did a lot, yeah, of, a lot of editing on that. Yeah. One. A lot of editing. Yeah. But you know, yeah. kind of what Can't really do. our goal is is just a. There's so many good stories here, be it drag racing or just anything in the car community. And and we wanted to document all of it. Yeah, I mean, you it's, know, it's and saving history, and that's what, that's the way I felt about the Dalton podcast. Yeah, you know, yeah. I was able to tell some stories that I knew, you know, and and all that'll be there forever. You know what I mean? Yeah, We're yeah. not going to be here forever, all but right, that right. stuff yeah. will be here. That stuff's floating you know? out in, in the universe. Exactly, now. it's yeah. here. Yeah, you know. I do got a quick Preston story, and I don't want to be like Preston. And no, we're no please do it. <laughs> nah, <laughs> we're fine. Oh, we're trying to wrap up anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so in 65, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love Preston. But So when he decided to build a dragster, you know, fairly recently, right. 
I was keeping up. You know, he was texting me, whatever, and and he said something about he's going testing. Are you going to be home? First time he will have drove since the 70s. Wow. Right. And I'm like, dang, Preston, I'm not going to be home. Well, I lied. I knew I was. <laughs> and I awesome. showed up. You know, I didn't Aww. I didn't want him to, you know, to whatever, whatever his thoughts would have been, you know, right. but I just showed up. And so he thought that was pretty cool. And I, I knew it was cool to get to watch Preston make a, his first run in 30 something years. You yeah, know, that's so cool. And I was so nervous for him. You know, it's been a long time, you know, and yeah, right. we get a short off season. But when you hop back on the roller coaster, it's like, holy crap, that's fast. And it's only been three months for me. Right. Yeah, we're yeah. talking thirty years. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. Well, he went long as he been. went one hundred and thirty. <laughs> I think yeah. was the fastest he had gone. Or you something know, whatever at that point. And the first run he made was scary. And Preston, I'm gonna look right at the camera. I'm sorry, you thought it was awesome, and I told you it was awesome, but it was scary looking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking right at the camera and tell you, it was a little wiggly, wobbly, you know. Yeah. And it was. It was a little scary looking. And we were at Holly Springs, which is, you know, it's a beautiful racetrack, but it ain't necessarily the longest. Right. Right. You know? And so the second run was not as bad. Third run, this guy, I'm like, he's a race car driver. Wow. It came back. He's you done know this I mean? before. Yeah, he's done this before. You know, it, it come back. It was pretty pretty awesome to watch. Yeah, you know, like for sure. Say, That's epic. You know, I guess it's, uh, you know, cobwebs are there a little bit yeah. you still it's still here but you haven't done it you know right, right. yeah oh that must well, have never comes back i mean you I do it for say, decades let, yeah. let alone it's car he hadn't driven before yeah. either, well technology so has come a long way yeah. even the feel the, the texture and feel of everything, everything is different Every, more, different. more aluminum more carbon fiber probably yeah, yeah his feet weren't hanging out the bottom of the chassis <laughs> <laughs> you know? right. the gears weren't right on his nuts <laughs> right. actually they were they were, they were on his nuts they were still oh so he's sitting there going ah home yeah. I remember you, yeah. <laughs> rumbly feeling. Oh, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's you know that uh, he he stepped into a little bit that about the going off the end of the track at Jackson. Yeah, you know, and that, that was scary. That was a that was a bad deal. Where I mean, he went way off. Yeah. The end of that uh, okay, track. okay, hold on. I've got something. I've just I've got to ask Clay. Have you ever had to push your dragster uh, down the track? They stopped across the finish line. Oh, thank goodness, <laughs> they stopped doing that. <laughs> Because he's thinking, done it twice. He's yes. done it two times. <laughs> and okay. I'm thinking, you know, Preston's a big man. You yeah. Know? yeah. I weigh 140 pounds. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking, yeah. Uh, I might not have made it. <laughs> Even though those kids from East Tennessee State University have got me in good shape, I don't think I'd make it. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I was shocked when he told us that. I, yeah. you know, I didn't think that was crazy a thing. rule. I, I was yeah. hiding that. I was hiding that under my hat. I, I knew about it. That's why I was like, so I heard this once. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, no, that's twice. I'm like, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> you didn't know about the second time. I like how he answered you. He said, no, I did not. So I did it twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So did he tell you all about bringing back the funny car for the first time? Park, you know, it parked in 76, I think, was the last time they raced the funny car. Uh, I got in the club. The Nitro Club, you know, I become part of their group by becoming a Nitro guy. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. You know, that yeah. was that's kind of like the initiation. You got to be a Nitro guy, and so the Cackle Fest thing is coming around. Like it's it's this has been years ago, you yeah. know, but the Cackle thing is growing, and that funny car sitting in the sh in, you know in the showroom down there at Ray Godman's place. Yeah, yeah. So that car literally got parked with the oil still in it. Wow. Mm. So they called me. They're like, hey, you got any bearings up there? You know, the race shop's still in. It's still the same bearings today that they run back then. It's the same. 426 Chrysler Hemi is still the same. Same rod bearings, same main bearings. Really? Wow. Yeah. The technology's better. Our bearings are better, but it's the same ones. Okay. So Preston's like, we're going to take this thing to Bowling Green to the Cackle Fest, you know? I'm like, cool. And he's like, so I'm going to pull the oil pan off and check the bearings. Hadn't been checked since the last time it went down the racetrack. It got put in the trailer and made its way to the showroom. Wow. Wow. So they dropped the oil pan off In the of 70s. It. I think Probably. 76 or 77. Wow. And they cranked it back up. Like, it, that is not a wow. restoration. That is a yeah. for real, probably got to be one of the very few in the world. Time capsule. Time capsule. 
And it, did, and it didn't need bearings in it. Wow. wow. Yeah, it didn't need bearings. I gave them bearings and rings for it, but it oh. did, they, yeah, they still had the oil in it. What about the Raymond wanted to use the oil again because the nitro done separated out of it. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we've heard he's, cheap, he's a cheap guy. <laughs> That's funny. That's awesome. Oh, now well, I am being like Preston yeah, and, right. and, go, and going on here. Yeah, it doesn't fall too far from yeah. the tree. <laughs> no, uh, but the uh, uh, what about the springs and stuff? Did they? they Everything replace, was still good. They didn't replace the springs or anything. Nope. It wow. was. I mean, and, and Preston is a motor guy. Yeah, and he, and he checked everything. It was. See, I mean, that, maybe but, he had to reshim them. I, I, I don't want to yeah. completely tell a story, but. I mean, you know, you know the camshaft. You've got all that tension sitting on those lobes. Well, that's what I mean on the springs. Because if you got springs that are closed for that long, yeah, yeah. I think because that that was my biggest worry. My my fifty five was off the off off the uh, road from o three to o seven, and you know that sat on an engine stand with with clothes and all that, and I fired it and all that, but it was like within six months, I'm like. Man, I am really rolling the dice. I got to get new springs. Get new springs on this thing. Mm-hmm. Comp camps. Yeah, yeah, comp camps. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> good thing they're in town, right? Yeah. right. <laughs> there you go. It was good to go. But they were great. Yeah. I mean, I could, I could probably still use the springs that were on. There, you know, that's but, one of those man. very things that every one of us as car guys do. You know, it's like ah, I got a motor sitting in the corner. I'm, a, I'll go roll it over every couple months. We never do. Never. No. We Ever. never do. So um, I've yeah. got. This is I promised last thing. So I've got <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> um, I got Dalton's, you know, championship winning race quad over there. I have the actual Harley that he crashed on, which a lot of people think's strange, but that is the actual bike that Dalton was riding. Wow. And when it's nice out, I, I do get them out. Now do is it every month? No, but if it's nice, yeah. I get them out. Yeah. I go I go so the neighbors probably hate it because I I just ripped that quad all over the the freaking neighborhood <laughs> here. Loud. You know? It is loud. <laughs> yeah. It's loud. But. Open baffles. <laughs> no, it's actually it's it's muffled because the AMA require it's a sound requirement. Oh, okay. But but I haven't put packing in that muffler in a long time. <laughs> but it just kind of went away. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. But we all do it. We leave yeah. the valves open. You don't. Mm, you know yeah. that motor set for four years. You could have easily on the motor stand grabbed a freaking socket just, and just turned it over. Turn yep. it over. Yep. Yep. Just one or two times. Yep. Keep Be the rings from seizing up. Nope. Just don't do it. We don't do it. No. That's a car guy thing. Mm. Yeah. You keep it, hanging us out. I'm going to start having questions again. <laughs> <laughs> Last one. Okay, on my side. Yeah. Uh, we never talked about crashes or anything. I've yeah. got. I've got very few. Thank goodness. Any injuries? Uh, I have been injured worse from barefoot water skiing than driving a race car. Okay, let's wow. go back to the crashes. <laughs> See, <Okay. laughs> yeah. That's, that's not selling tickets, he man. He doesn't weigh enough to get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little feather in there. Yeah, he's like, yeah. That Hans device is like, yeah. are you sure? Yeah. 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 But you had, you had one break in half, though, didn't you? No, that wasn't me. I thought you did. No, the only thing I've ever had, and it was 100% my fault, Flip is around. a blowover. That I was did. it. Oh, yep. I did yeah. a blowover. I saw a really cool recovery just this week. Uh, on Facebook, you know those things pop up the oh, reels, yeah. and that thing went. I mean, way up. I mean, he probably cracked his chassis coming right. down, but he kept it straight, and the day. parachute went yeah. down. So. Didn't yours? Yours spun around, didn't it? No, it just flipped over. It just went flipped <laughs> over, straight over, and then broke the tail off. You just so skidded it on the roof. The well, the the, the, the wing cage. actually, wing. the yeah. rear wing. So, y'all remember when the the movie Dukes of Hazard come out with Johnny Knoxville. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So we were sponsored by Werner Enterprises, the trucking company, for, for, for all my championship years. And we did a deal with Warner Brothers Studio. So the car was orange with 01 on the side of it. Wow. How Dukes cool. of Hazard yeah. logo. Yeah. Couldn't Dick do that, that now, but continue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have a flag on it. Nobody said it did. I'm just saying there's some haters out there. <laughs> So semifinal round, I'm racing uh, Bruce Litton, Lucas Oil sponsored car at the time. He was probably my biggest rival for all my championships for the most part. And for uh, several races leading up to this, we had the balance of the car pretty light in the front, and this thing is just carrying the front end. It's carrying the front end, but it's ripping. So it's like, don't screw leave it, it alone, leave it alone, alone. leave yeah. it alone. Semifinals, I'm racing Bruce. Thing shakes the tires. I pedaled it. Technically, after the fact, you know, being a Monday morning quarterback, the shake was actually done, but I stepped off the throttle and back on, mm. on the very tail end of the shake, and it just started driving up on the front end. And 
it's up there, you know, a foot off the ground, let's just say, initially. And I kind of like look over. You would be amazed at what your body and your brain can do under how those much conditions. It slows when, you down. when adrenaline yeah. is going, yeah. yeah, you know. And I'm like, I'm ahead. <laughs> well, so it's got the front end up, and and it goes a little further. It comes a little more. I'm like it's okay. I can still hold it. I, I got it. I got it. <clears throat> goes a little more. I'm like it's okay. You know, I actually let go of the steering wheel and grab the brake. You know, to try Just to, to bring it back down a little bit. S- yeah. In my thinking, yeah. <laughs> and I'm gonna blame I'm gonna blame Dalton because I had learned how to do wheelies on four wheelers. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking I just grabbed the brake a little bit, and then the next thing I know, I can't see the the scoreboards anymore it's all blue sky it's all blue sky so this thing literally <laughs> is you know they're they're almost 30 feet long a top fuel car is yeah, and yeah. this thing is straight up and down yeah and it is like poof the body's gone you know it just like yeah. disintegrated just, yeah popped off. and so i'm like it got this real is, windy all of a sudden. This is going to hurt. This uh, is going to hurt. You know, I mean, all this yeah. is happening real fast. down there. <clears throat> you know, it's like, oh, this is going to hurt. So as it starts to rotate on over, like I'm starting to go upside down, I start getting in the fetal position. You know, it's like yeah. when, when somebody's going to punch you in the shoulder, you know, you tighten up, up, you know. Yeah. yeah, so I'm like, all right, here it comes. And it land, It hits. And every now and then, literally, and this is no joke, my team can tell you, I was hitting the radio. I'm okay. I'm okay. Wow. You know, so when it it it's about to hit, I hear the engine start running again. When it was straight Ooh. up and down, it was one of the quietest moments of my life. It's just quiet, blue sky. Because you were still kind of in the <laughs> oh, air at this yeah. point. <laughs> so as it's almost about to hit, I hear the engine start running again. Ooh. So I do my normal shut down, normal yeah. procedure. Yeah. Shut the fuel off, cut the switches off. Fetal position, boom, it hits. I thought, huh, that wasn't too bad. And it really wasn't. You know, it's like, okay, you know. So I'm sliding upside down backwards. And <laughs> As one does. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> at, at well over 200 at miles. 200 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the radio, I'm okay. Huh. You know, and this thing is going backwards <sighs> for days. Like, it's yeah. just sliding, sliding, sliding. And I had actually relaxed a little bit. I'm like, all right, it'll, it's going to stop. And then I see the wall mm. getting closer and closer. So back in the fetal position because I have to assume that the rear tire is going to touch. It's and you going don't, to, yeah, you don't have you a know. crumple zone at yeah. all. No, because that's the back yeah. of the car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's going to start flipping. And it just continues sliding. Then I see some yellow reflecting off the wall. So it's a little, little fire, not a big fire, but a little fire. Like crap! And well, it finally comes to a stop. <clears throat> and one of the safety guys, a guy named Howie Dalton, I. I Still remember his name. He's a good dude. Comes sliding over there, literally, and we're like face to face. He's on his knees setting up, and I'm hanging upside down. And he's like, are you okay? Are you okay? I'm like, I'm, I'm fine. You know, I'm okay. And he reaches for the seatbelts. So I'm like, Howie, if you undo them seatbelts, I'm not going to be okay. Yeah, yeah snap my neck. The, yeah. Way it, the way the car had flipped over, it took the rear wing, which is huge on those things, and way back there. And folded it up against the roll cage. Right. And so the roll cage was as high as a grown man on his knees, you know, setting up. Oh, yeah. So you're up there. So I'm up there, you know, two, three feet, whatever it is. And so they got me out. Man, I'm really going to pull a Preston. I have to tell two stories now. (laughs) Please. (laughs) (laughs) So they get me out. I'm 100% fine. Like, I am 100% fine. They put me on a backboard, taped my head down. You know, I mean, they saw this, and it was pretty cool looking. You can look it up on YouTube. Yeah, it is pretty cool looking. But before I finish that, I got to back up to very early in my career, probably the second or third race I ever did. I drove Nick Bonifant's car. He Bonifant clutches. That's where everybody gets their clutch disc from, even to this day. And I ran off the end of the racetrack at Reading, Pennsylvania. Had no brakes. This was on a Monday. We were testing. And, I mean, zero brakes. I run off into the sand trap, hit the catch net. And when I hit the catch net, I thought, well, okay, I'll, that that wasn't bad, you know. And I relaxed. And 
then I go backwards a long ways because it had stretched <laughs> it the net stretched out. The net and yeah, slung you back. Slung me backwards. Look like uh, Wiley Slung Coyote shot. at that yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. Hundred percent. Ac- ac- Acme stretch net. Yes. <laughs> so, as it turns out. Mike Clover was the crew chief on the car for Nick Bonifant, and that's who we ended up hiring to be the crew chief on the IHRA car as well. So we've done one championships and races in between when that happened in Reading, Pennsylvania, to now I'm laying on the racetrack on a backboard with my head taped down. Well, your crew can't come to the driver. You know, it's just you can't. You're not supposed to. So they got me on the board. I'm laying on the ground. I got to finish Reading first. I'm screwing this story up. <laughs> You're good. Okay. I'm trying to tell two at once here. So Mike Clover comes to the sand trap down there where I had just hit the catch net. And he puts his arm around me. Are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. He's like, dude, you're shaking. You're vibrating all over. And I was just absolute yeah, adrenal- shaking. Adrenal- adrenal- yeah. Shaking. Yeah. So now I'm on the backboard back in Michigan. And I know my team can't come out on the racetrack. And so I asked the IHRA guys, I'm like, will y'all at least let Mike come over here to see I'm okay? So they do. And he comes over. The first thing he gets to is my feet and my ankles, like how where I was laying on the racetrack. And he grabs my ankle and, like, my knee, and he's like, man, are you okay? Are you okay? And I'm like, Mike, you're the one shaking. <laughs> he, he was – I could feel it in his hands. Yeah. He was shaking. He thought you were messed up. And yeah. I was fine. Yeah. But, wow. Yeah, that was my, my my only real big one. I've had a bunch of weird, goofy. Been very yeah. fortunate. Well, yeah. Man. There was, uh, I guess, last week. There was a pretty serious, uh, funny car, uh, Ricky Neal, and yeah. oh, down at uh, yeah at uh, Funny Car Chaos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That guy got, got burned, burned pretty bad. Ken, so yeah. Thoughts Ken and Singleton. prayers with him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yep. I know uh, it sounds like uh, things are going good for recovery at least. Man, yeah. burns yes. are the worst. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. yeah, terrible for sure. Uh, well, I think we should, are we good? Uh, we got Man, one I'm more. Yeah. Uh, dare, dare we try again? <laughs> you yeah, could, yeah, right. All right, stay tuned for part two. There you go. Where we'll all tell right. all the untold stories. Yeah, we're, we're, we're literally It'd be claiming looking after dark. Well, and, what, <laughs> and what you don't know is my bedtime is usually one thirty, two o'clock in the morning. So y'all are just oh, now wow. hitting peak hours. For oh me. yeah, oh, yeah, right. same, same. We're gonna me put too. a new motor in this thing. <laughs> right. Stay tuned. After yeah, that. we're gonna take that police car motor apart here later. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. for sure. That battery. Well, cool. Well, uh, yeah. So uh, next week we got the Jeffrey Ferguson. Um, Absolutely. And and he's doing some really really cool stuff with uh, Bonneville cars and race cars and Dig all that. sorts of stuff. So might really, get some really Bucky cool. Gallimore stories. That's right. Get some Bucky Gallimore stories. So be very very cool. I may make my way to Bonneville. That's Come what on. I'm talking oh, about. We're, been? we're yeah. all trying to go. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's. You ever been? No. You gotta go. We should go. Gotta Let's go. go. I have go. an offer to go. So Come let's on. go. Yeah, yeah got to go. Well, I guess you have two offers now. He'll be there. I'll be there. Yeah. I have an offer. I Matt don't know if I'm going to do it or not. You going to run? I've got an offer. Oh. 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 You hey. hey, you know what? Breaking How about, wait, wait, wait. How about this? I don't know first. if we should I? I'm going to overcommit on behalf of the group. You accept the offer. You back tell us. We'll do this again in Bonneville. <laughs> There you go. We'll, Boom. Uh, we'll, yeah, for real. No, I'm we'll so serious it. right now. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I would be yeah. Epic. Let's so let's let's uh, I'll I'll commit to that. I wouldn't plan on going to Bonneville this year, but you, you might. I, you I, might I, have I, <laughs> I might have to. Might have yeah, to. Yeah, I've never been. Yes. Yeah. Me neither. Me neither. And I, uh, and, I, and I know George Poteet. Yeah. Well, hey, our, yeah. uh, yep, we we know we got a couple guys here. Uh, ask, man, we have so much stuff to talk about. We just don't want to shut going. this thing down. Yeah. Yeah, right. Greg, uh, shop nights, right. Mike, plug your shop night one more one more time. Yeah, we do shop nights at my shop. It's an open shop night. Any and everybody that wants to come. I watched the videos on that. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. do you know what we're building right now? Yeah. So we're building a belly tanker style that. car for uh, for for hopefully Bonneville. Knock on wood. Yeah. That belongs to Greg Bourne. So, That's so, cool. Yeah, you're more than welcome to come out. Flathead anytime. powered. That, yeah, flathead, it'll be flathead powered. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I'm a, I am a, a <laughs> over committing. We're over committing everything yeah, tonight. I love flathead Fords. We're That's thinking about going to Mars next year. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This coming Saturday. That's the next shop night. You're more than welcome to come out. We're, I'll, I'll we're be there in Vegas. Out. Vegas. Weekends are hard for me. Yeah, weekends yeah. are hard. I work weekends. Yeah, that's right. I don't right. do nothing during the week. Yeah. yeah. I'm, going, <laughs> week, I'm going to Vegas. Weekends are hard. I work. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be in Vegas working. That's yeah. how I am, too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's how I am, too. You working them bones, baby. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be in Vegas next weekend? This weekend. Oh, this weekend? Yeah. Oh, well, I, I was your... 
How was your uh, uh, lead group? I already went out there. That was your yeah. security yeah. team. He was making yeah. sure everything was safe. Everything for you. looks good. It's a little, <laughs> little, little, little bumpy in the left hand lane. Which uh, one? Because yeah. we do four of them <laughs> yeah, this weekend. Wow. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's a big uh, weekend, lines. man. Yeah. How do you like four lines? I personally, I know I posted something about it a couple days ago, and man, people just freaking will rip on that thing, you know? But that They like it or don't like don't it? Don't like it. I, and I think it's kind of the purest. Well, purest. I'll tell you from a, from a viewer standpoint, it's hard, it's hard to, to watch keep up. four cars. It's oh, hard it to is. keep up. It like, is. It's a lot. It to, is. And it plus, is. I like I like the head to head. It's old school, man. Yeah. Like you're yeah. like. But this you is know a, what? Go ahead. Back in the day, they raced four wide, five wide, six wide. However much room they had, they could fit it in. If they yeah. do it on the airstrip. Yeah. Well, yep. if you look at the Whatever the yep. Marshall, but they one. weren't going 330. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're a little closer to halls, but if you look at the Marshall, I've raced there. Yeah, what? I didn't know that. <laughs> that's a put it on the list. We can't keep going. So, but if you watch, if you go back and watch the Marshall uh, and the Rodders one, we found out they were rolling starts back then. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, know back that. in the day, they used they to were, originally do rolling. They starts. They were rolling starts, and they went roll racing. That's right. Yeah, yeah. wide open. You got, did you roll start when you were there? No. Like, right. So it's no. wide open all the way there. Wide open if you can make the turn all the way back. <laughs> <laughs> That's real racing, oh, if you ask me. That's right. Shenanigans. That's Shenan- what those shenaniganry. Are. Yes. But here's yeah. here's my four wide recap, real fast. I enjoy the chaos on the starting line because I am an old bracket racer. I think some it's, we've done it enough now. You don't see it as often, but every weekend, whether it be in qualifying or during the race, somebody will not know what lane they're in. And what I mean by that is, if you're in, if you're facing the down the racetrack. Lane one is normal. You're looking on at the pre-stage and stage on your side of the Christmas tree. Lane two, also normal. No, lane two, your pre-stage and stage are on the other side of the Christmas tree. So, oh, because because yeah. there's it's got four. four. Oh, yeah, see, four. I didn't think about that. Yeah. I would figure that they would have two and two. Well, but, I but guess we got to know because then we you got, wouldn't know when everybody else staged. is staged. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't even think yeah. about that. Oh, wow. wow. That's yeah. confusing. Yeah, you think they could just would add a light? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that have fixed everything? I, mean, I don't no. see that. You, you got to you you know where your pre stage is and stage so that everybody yeah. can take off at the same time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so you got bull, 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 bull. Yeah. Bull, bull, bull. Yeah. That's basically Christmas. Yeah. Wow. Major Christmas. So. It never fails. At some point, somebody will get timed out because once car a car is staged, all the rest of the cars have seven seconds. So it never fails. Somebody wow. will time right. out. Somebody yeah. thinks they're staged and they're, and they're not. not. They're looking at the wrong side of the tree or whatever. Wow. And the racing side of it, I've actually, I don't know, for whatever reason, we've always done really well. I haven't won yet, won a four wide yet, but I've been in a pile of finals. Yeah. What I do not like being a very small small budget team on race day if i'm getting my butt kicked i shut the car off like if i smoke the tires on the starting line the other guy's ripping down through there i shut the car off four wide i can't see the other two cars so So you you have to assume you could go all the way you've got to go no matter what they might yeah be right on your bumper drive it to you blow it yeah yeah wow so it it can be a costly weekend in that matter sense yeah you know because you just can't see the other cars. The wall yeah. in between the two tracks too is high. too tall. Too tall. You can see the wings, but when you're trying to drive twelve thousand horsepower and you're out of control, you know it's like. I mean, I don't even know how you focus on. Well, anything. you can see so much, but That's but so crazy, you're looking though. you're looking above a wall for wings. Look, at I, the same. I rode in a Tesla Plaid, which is probably the fastest thing I've ever been in, yeah. and like. When that thing took off, it was so like the focus goes away. I I, yeah. I don't even know how you can even focus on anything. It's though. that fight or flight thing. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. crazy. Have so, you ever been in a wreck? Anybody been in a wreck? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Plenty. <clears throat> Keep your eyes open. I'm, yeah. So when you're driving down the highway and you see a a wreck, it's like, man, did you see that? Happened that quick. But when you're the one in the oh, wreck, it, you're like, uh oh, it takes oh, forever. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's sure. the same thing. Yeah. Now the first couple hundred runs in a fuel car, it's just like holy crap fast. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> it takes a while before you can really say that you're driving. You know. Yeah. 
and not and they, just holding on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like any professional sport. Once yeah. you once you get accustomed it down, to your brain it, slows your, down. your brain yeah. slows it down to a yeah. crawl. And when it does, you know, when you have those days where it's really slow, that's when you're kicking butt. Yeah, the zone. you're focused. Up, yeah, you know? that's right. And there are days still, and I've done it forever. There's days still where it's like, Dad gum, I sucked. You know, you just you did a bad job driving. You can get the car there, and you don't run into anything. But it's like you right. know, it didn't all line. I don't up. know if you've ever played golf either. There's days when you go out there, you hit the golf ball. It's like, man, this is freaking easy. Right. You go back the next day, you can't hit the ball. Right. Yeah. 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 You know. Well, that's usually the next hole for me. But. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, me too, to be honest. But. Yeah. 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 Right. Somebody I else call, call it. I tried. I. I tried. I. <laughs> I did pull it. a Preston. We're having so much fun though, either <laughs> way. So, um, but no. Anyway, uh, next week we're going to do Jeffrey Ferguson, and uh, hey, we'll um, we'll do this again for sure. We appreciate 100%. we appreciate your time, and yeah, thanks a and, lot, man. Good luck next weekend. I'm yeah. ready this for weekend. Sure. Don't pull that loud pedal. Yeah. That's say right. hi to Vegas for me, and uh, yeah. So for Matt Marion. That's our our producer, which always never gets a shout out, and he Matt always Marion. whines about it. Thank you, Matt. I heard you could sing, Matt. Matt. Yeah. I heard you could sing. yeah, I'm a pretty good singer. Let's I hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Can you do some Let's ice cube for me? Yeah. <laughs> Don't stop. Get it. Get it. You got to sign the contract first. Uh, <laughs> he, he gets money. He's like Shirley. He gets his money up front. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there you go. He's the only one getting paid in this deal. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> so for Matt Mary and Sean Young. Mike Abbott, Javier Augustine, Sean Brereton, Clay Milliken, thank you so much for uh, thanks, for thanks. for sitting in, and we appreciate it, and good luck. This was a whole lot of fun. You're going to take us out with a 30s voice? I don't know why we could do it. Do it. This has been Hot Rod Blues with our pal Clay Milliken in Drummond's, Tennessee. <laughs> Drummond's <laughs> 10, two stores and a cotton gin. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we'll right, see guys. you guys next week. Bye, buddy. Bye.